Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Dudlet. You're on, babe. Jim, are there any amendments to the um, agenda that you have? Yes. Yes. Did you get the latest one with the writing up top? No, I don't. No. no. I don't print it off. Oh. oh, I thought you did. All right. No. So why don't you let us? Know? I have it here. You want me to read it, or do you want? Yeah. Do you want to open it? Yeah. Open the All meeting. right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like to open the hearing. I have okay. a motion. Do we need I a motion? Second. To open. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we have some amendments to the agenda, um, starting with uh, the emergency order for a water department at Cornet Stenson Road. Uh, and these, these will be under either, you know, either, either under agent's report or other administrative items, but important enough that the commission ought to be aware of the request. Uh, the drainage swale at the Marine Park. Uh, we need a vote for the sprinkler system at 104 Edward Foster Road. Uh, the CRS recertification. I'm gonna, uh, okay. lot, lot 2 Glades Road, add CFC for 274 Gannett Road. Fragmites removal and remove CFC for 57 Surfside Road. Remove it. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to eliminate lock, the discussion on Lock Two Glades Road. That's um we're in a <coughs> we're in a um, negotiation. We're in a we're being yeah sued. we're in a legal battle. We're in a legal battle on yeah. that. So I'm going to I'm going to I'll forego that and. We'll have a, a separate discussion on that at some other time. I was thinking of, I was considering going into, uh, you know, ex asking for executive session, but it, it's too, it's premature because I just got, I just got a memo and I need to thoroughly think it through and then, then we'll call a meeting yeah. okay. an executive session on it. So we have an order of conditions for Mullen at 73 Kane Drive. Possibly. Possibly. If the project's closed. And then we also have an, an additional certificate of compliance for 274 Gannett Road. I make a motion to accept the agenda as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we'll start with a request for determination with Levesque at 315 Clap Road. You worked hard. Oh, all right. Hi, Frank. Hey there, Frank. You're all wet. A little soggy today. Yeah, huh? a little bit. Is it snowing at higher elevations, sir? More important Open items, too. Are uh, we opened yet? Yeah. We amended the agenda. Actually, you know what? You should do this one. I'm going to close myself. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, uh, on October 10th, 2012, during their 6.15 p.m. meeting at the town hall, the Situate Conservation Commission will act on the request of Charles Levesque for a determination of the apl applicability of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaw to build an addition and relocate a septic tank on property located at 315 Clap Road, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Can you explain the project to us. And uh, yeah, the addition is on the back of the house. It's uh, 21 by 24, uh, roughly, uh, in dimension. Uh, just an increased living space, extra bath, um, and it's going toward the toward the leaching field, toward the back of the property, not extending toward um, the. It's not any closer to, to the boundary of the property. Um, um, I, I had submitted a, uh, a map of the uh, wetlands 
uh, a year ago because um, I, I did file uh, an RDA for an addition of um, a driveway and uh, I think that's in the, the packet there um, the the original was was a, uh, a satellite printout of the wetlands but that didn't Xerox very well so I just um, uh, put that on the map um, so you could see where where the wetlands lie um, according to the map that was printed out well I guess my problem is that I don't see on this little sketch which would have been nice if you put the, the wetlands line why or is in the buffer zone because I can't I have no no idea if you're on the hundredth or fifty or if you're free free and clear. Or I, do you have that printout? Yeah. If you want, if you want, if you want to jump to the agent, we might. Yeah. And quick, well, quicker. the other question is mm -hmm. with the um, switching of the septic tank. Is that going going in the buffer zone too? I I don't know. I just I'm yeah. not able to catch you. I just you yeah. gotta I'll make it aside from being my dentist. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've also done some work, and that's why I'm yeah. closing myself. Yeah, okay. <coughs> All right. Well, and then we can go back to the, uh, the commissioners, but I don't. You may not have to. Uh, I, I was I was a little baffled when I went there because they're they're kind of they're, they're older the older drawings, and I'll get to the main point in about thirty seconds. But the older drawings. Um, you know, there's a shed in the back that's not on the plans. There's a there's a, a deck with a addition that's supposed to go, which is not on the plans. Um, these are these are actually from the previous previous filing about a year ago, where it says proposed driveway. The driveway is already in. It's a gravel driveway, and the driveway that says it's gravel is actually asphalt. So the plans are really would would not be acceptable if you were, if it were in jurisdiction, based on the aerial photos of the DEP wetlands maps that we have. Um, they're measuring um, over 200 feet to either one of the wetlands that are in there. So even if we went to the 100 foot, even if we went to the 100 foot buffer, I believe the I believe the wetland maps are not not all that accurate in this area. Mm -hmm. But it's measuring 200 feet to what we have plotted on the aerial photos. So the plus or minus accuracy of these is generally within 100 feet. So I would suggest, without it, doing a field survey of the wetlands. He's probably more than, there's an extremely high likelihood he's out of the 100 foot buffer for the work he's doing. Plus, he's in an already al altered area where the proposal is, where the proposed uh, expansion is going. Okay. Let go. So, I'm not sure why he filed. <laughs> do, do you know <laughs> my acceptance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, are, there are a couple of commissioners that think, that think there are wetlands closer. But well, I don't, I, I, and I, I just, I don't think they're closer. There was some with the driveway, and I just suggested because of that, it might be a good idea. I think the driveway was closer to, to a questionable wetlands. area. Yeah. Right. To, to make the what? The, when he oh. filed for the driveway, oh. mm -hmm. that was a little bit closer. But yes. I, I think yeah. the back part is probably far enough away. It might just, if it's 100 feet, it is. Yeah. And I don't think it is, but. If you had a chance to look at it and, and you saw that, I, I, yeah, I didn't go. I didn't go tromping in because when I came back, I, you know, I, I saw that it was about 200, at least on the maps that we have, 200. <coughs> on the maps that we have, are, there's a plus or minus accuracy of easily 25, 50 feet, but being 200 feet, there's a h extremely high likelihood is he's out of the 100 foot buffer. But I still need to know where the septic system. <laughs> where where do you plan to put the tank? Uh, uh, did, did, is that is that not on the drawing right there? No. It's, right, it's going to be right near the, the, leech, the tea uh, box. The, the, the tank is where the expansion um, is going. So where the addition is going. It says existing septic to be moved. Coordinate with owner. So it can, that's all it says. Okay. So I just. Well, I have. I I think this is the copy that I submitted right here. Can I approach? Yeah. Yeah. Caref carefully. <laughs> I bite. It's like a judge. Um, so this is where the the, uh, the septic is now, and this yes. is where it's going. Okay, so so it's just going oh, right. You, See, I this, this no, no, this is the one that we have. I, okay, I didn't submit this. No, no. you may have, but we so didn't get it. So it's going in this area. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, there it is. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't even go to that one. I was just looking at that. So All right. 
this is oh, plant roses right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's there. I know I need another <laughs> pair, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm all set. I'm happy. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody in the audience? I make a motion for a negative three. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'd like to bring you another one. This is fine. Thanks. I like the two glasses. That's really good. <laughs> On October 10th, 2012, during the 615 meeting of the Town Hall Situate Conservation Commission, We'll act on the request of Kathy Condon for determination of applicability Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetlands Bylaws to build an addition on property located at 105 Oceanside Drive, Situate. About others and other interested parties are invited to Hello. And you are? I'm Kathy Condon. Yeah. You can enlighten everybody while they're opening up. While they're up opening up all those big papers. It's a 10 by 10 addition to the back of the house it takes up some of where the existing deck is and it's you it will be used primarily as a three season room is there a plot plan or anything no. well I have one yeah. my contractor <coughs> was supposed to give it to you but I did bring a copy those contractors. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask because this, this plan is more an architect's plan than it's more yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a doctor's history. Okay. So, uh, you want to look at that? Yeah, great. Is there any frags or anything in the back? No. no. Jim, Jim went out there and said. Okay. So is there an elevation? Um, yeah, well, there I think there. Jim said. Yeah, I saw that. It's high enough. The, the elevation Can you on it? I don't know what the elevation is. Was that 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 the, the contractor was supposed to have brought in a plot plan and an aerial photo that I handed him. Yeah. It showed where the location of the addition was going, but it never showed up. Okay, well. <laughs> is your house been elevated or anything? Do you know? No. I'm at the end <coughs> of the flood zone. You're in it or? I'm or? at the end of it. But you're in it or not? Yeah. You're in it, yeah. So what, if half of the building is in it, then the entire building has to comply with the with the half that's in. Mm -hmm. So one oh five just across from the body. Yes. Right across from them. What number have? What where um a corner sixth. There's like a big big side yard there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it need to be elevated? Or? I don't yes. think so. Yes. Is it in the floodplain, do you think? Yeah. The half of the house is in the floodplain, AE elevation 11. So the material that, that we were supposed to get followed up on this didn't, didn't show up. So I don't know what the elevation of the proposed condition is. But what we could do is um, put a condition on it that... In the, in, the, in the local bylaw, it needs to be one foot higher than the BFE and in the Situa bylaw. So if it's elevation 11, the, the floor has to be at elevation 12. Which, of course, doesn't mean anything to me. Well, um, we're going to put it. When it floods, the flood is never up to my deck, and this would be equal to the deck. So, If your home is in the floodplain, mm -hmm. which Jim has looked at it and with the flood maps, if half, even if half your house is in it, the house has to be compliant with that, um, with those regulations, which, which means that your addition can't be below, the first floor of your addition can't be below elevation 12. So what they should have brought with this information was the elevation of the first floor of your home. So when, if we condition this, there's really no other issues that the commission, I believe, would have with this, other than to make sure that the elevation of the addition is at least at elevation. The first floor, the finished floor, is at elevation 12. You may have something. Do you have flood insurance? Yes. 
So chances are there's a certificate somewhere that states the elevation of your home. Either your insurance agent has it. I don't see it on this plot plan. But you should have that information. If you could just bring that to the agent, um, we'll condition this with the stipulation that the addition be at elevation 12. Okay. The only problem you'd have would be if your home is lower than that, then your addition floor has to be higher than the rest of the house, which Might is not. But it, sound, it doesn't sound like it is. It sounds like if you're up that far, you're probably not, but we just need to confirm that. Okay, and what if I can't find the elevation? Um, I should check with my insurance agent? I would start there. It might be less expensive. Um, otherwise, the surveyor or somebody's going to have to confirm that elevation. But if you've purchased flood insurance, somebody want to know the elevation of your home because that's how they set your rate. Okay. It'll be on your insurance policy, the zone you're in, which will give the, uh, which will give the Okay. So the, the, the building inspector will require, will, the building inspector, before you get a building permit, will require that it go to the base flood elevation, which is 11. But under the Conservation Commission's bylaw uh, in situ, it has to be a foot higher than that. So we can, can, we can condition the permit that we give you tonight, that it, that it needs to be at elevation 12, and I can coordinate with the building inspector to make sure that he knows that. Now, would that affect the, the depth? I mean, right now, whatever the elevation of my house is, when I step out, I'm on a deck. <coughs> and part of the deck is being removed to put in the, the addition. Right. So is it possible my addition, we'd be stepping down to the deck? That's not going to affect the deck as no, we the rebuild there. the deck. No, you can leave your existing structure. It's just any new structure has to comply with that elevation. So we don't know where your house and deck are. But the new structure is going to be at 12 feet. But so the other thing would be you, is you really just need to get that elevation. I assume you hired an architect to do this plan. I did. So they should have that information. I mean, he, that's something they really should have done for you. I don't think he did. I, well, he should have. Um, well, they'll have to before they build something. Yeah. Okay. So I, it's everything else is out of our jurisdiction. It's just this elevation piece. So okay. if you can um, confirm that elevation with uh, your agent bring it in. Um. You could have Patrick, you could have Patrick Walsh contact me. Okay. He's the one who, he's the one who came over with these. Right, and I think He was Patrick supposed to give us a didn't follow up information, but it didn't, so I, I need to talk to him before we can, we, we can sign off now, but we need to talk to Patrick to make sure that the design elevation is correct. Okay. And then we'll give you the. And what is your name, please? I'll give you a card. Okay. Does anybody he else? In, he came in twice. <laughs> I, I'm just saying the existing deck could be Thank you. relocated. It, 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 yes, the, do you have the, right the existing? Okay. Um, it's a 10 by 10 addition, but probably at least five or six of the feet is where the deck is now. That's not what this shows. But he's talking about the side deck. I'm talking about the it says side deck. Oh, no, we're looking at the back deck. I'm not. I'm looking at the side deck. Okay. The side porch? Existing deck to be oh, okay. And rebuilt. Okay. Um, I had a car crash into my house in um, July of 11, and there's a, a porch slash deck, whatever you want to call it, um, closer to the street. We're simply moving that to the middle of the house. Instead of close, yeah, so this location here, yeah. yeah. If you look, the existing one, there's more there, so it goes like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it goes like this. The architect or Pat? Pat. Okay, Pat's the contractor. Okay, he's, okay. Well, the architect, the drawer is going to have to reflect what the commission's authorization is. <coughs> okay. Uh, I mean, we sort of have two options right now. We can either just continue this until you come back with the information that we need, or we can issue the orders with the piece that 
your architect or what it will get us the information that's required. Okay. Uh, it, these are really incomplete. And, and, you know, sometimes it's difficult to understand that. But we really have a whole bunch of other hearings tonight, so we really can't do your and that's fine. plans um, in detail. But I think if, if we just condition it that they bring in those pieces and your architect finishes putting things together. The foundation plan, too, for the deck in the addition, right? Is there one on? No. no. So. I don't think it was going to have a foundation. It was just going to be on piling. Oh, that's still a foundation. That's, that's still a foundation. Like there's a drawing, how many piers, how deep are the footings. Isn't it on no. one of those pages? No. I don't know how complete your set of plans are. No, we just have a, a plan view of the house. Oh, see, I have plans that show all the posts. I, so again, we really don't have all the information that should okay. have been submitted. That's what okay. you were supposed to drop off. Um, I was leaving all this up to Pat. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you need to see where the posts are going to be for the addition to. I would say a complete. A you want the, the set, complete set of complete plans that have just all like of that. Just like six pages or. Yeah, at least a copy to the agent. <coughs> okay. And then also elevation of the home, of your existing home. Okay. And what the addition will be. Okay. All right? Yeah, I think I know. I have no more questions. Okay. Audience, anybody? I was just going to say, Neil might possibly have an elevation certificate in his office if she wanted to ask. Him. Okay. Okay. That's the building inspector. Right. Okay. 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 Um, I, I, don't think we, I think we can close it and with the stipulation that those plans. I, I don't see anything that's really. No, I don't need the right. Just subject to approval for foundation plans. I made the motion. Ty? I have one thought on that. If we close it, though, what happens if the elevation is such that she wants to change where those decks are? Because they may not work. If they have to be a foot above if they, and they don't match up with her current entrances, then she's going to need to change the plans. That's actually true. I just am trying to save you from having to do another filing. Another filing, yeah. If we close it, then she would have to file again if it if it doesn't line up. We might have to, yeah. So continue. We might have to continue it and get all the information continue. required. Yeah. It, I was anticipating it would all be in and in your hands. Okay. Okay, I'm motion. So we're just going to continue this to the next meeting, and you can make sure you get all that information. Good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have to make a motion to continue to work. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to continue um, Condon 105 Ocean Side Drive to October 22nd. In no time on that, it's not yet. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Do you want to give that mortgage plan back, um, Mrs. Condon? Thank you. McSherry Brothers. Okay, thank you. Lots one and lots two. 218 First Parish Road. Can we, we can do those together. Yeah. Fire away. Thank you. Um, my name is Lenore White. I'm the professional wetland scientist with Wetland Strategies, and I'm here tonight on behalf of McSherry Brothers uh, and filing the two notices of intent that were filed some many months ago for a single family home on each lot. The last time I was here, it was several months ago, and I wanted to come here tonight, number one, to bring you up to speed, number two, to talk about maybe a, a review of this project in a different way. But um, as I mentioned, the last time I was here, the Commission had decided that they wanted to hire their own expert review consultant to look at these isolated wetland areas that exist towards the front of these lots. Um, that was done. We um, paid the review fee. Um, it took a while for us to get a report from the agent. And I don't know if you folks have had a chance to review that report. Okay. And did you find it helpful to your analysis here? Because frankly, my review was that 
this report talked about an ANRAD that was filed and sort of went through all the details about an ANRAD and how maybe this ANRAD application is not complete, which is totally different than what we filed. We filed two notices of intent for the construction of a single family home, yet there really are no conclusions in the consultant's report about the project that we're proposing here. So it was somewhat confusing to me, and um, I think my clients were equally as confused, but without going into a lot of detail about that, what I'd really like to do is move forward. And what we're proposing to do at this point is to, and I have actually submitted to you folks in writing, a request for a waiver from your bylaws. As you may know, there's a lot of restrictions in your bylaws regarding when you can alter wetlands, and they're restricted to certain size, how that mitigation is proposed. And with the proposal that we have made to you, which is to construct these two family, single family homes, and I'll pull out the plan, there is no way that we can meet the specifics of your regulations. In other words, if we were to conclude that these areas in the front of the lot are jurisdictional, which I don't think anybody's concluded at this point, it effectively renders this whole two parcel site unbuildable because there's no place on either of these lots that are beyond your buffer zone for these wetlands. So, frankly, the only way we can go forward with this project is to request a waiver. So I've done that. I've put it in writing to you folks, and I note that the standards of the waiver are that it's up to the applicant, <coughs> myself, and my client to demonstrate to you that providing this waiver would be an improvement over existing conditions. So I've looked at that standard, and I've come up with this position that what we have in the front here of this lot are these isolated pockets. They were not shown on any previous plans that came before the commission that I'm aware of that were approved by the commission. These isolated wetlands are not shown on the state wetland maps. They're not shown on the federal wetland maps. They're not shown anywhere. And what has occurred on this lot over time is that throughout this lot, there were perk tests conducted. 2003, there was a dozen perk tests con conducted. 2004, there was another 10 or so perk tests conducted. So now what we have out here is an area that's a mess. It's hummocks, um, hills, there's all kinds of different vegetation out there. And in parts of the area, yeah, there, there's, there's wetland vegetation, and yes, there's some standing water. But my analysis is that these areas out front developed, at least in part, as a result of all these perk tests that were done in 2003 and 2004. And rather than protect these as pristine wetlands, we think we can offer you something that would be better and that would protect the wetlands that we know are out back, <coughs> that have been confirmed by the Conservation Commission, that border on um, a vernal pool, that are identified in your town's master plan as an area to be protected for recreational purposes or conservation purposes. So what we would like to do is offer you some mitigation for these wetlands these isolated wetlands out front that we're proposing to fill and provide you something that ultimately we think would be a better functioning, not only for the wetland, but would also meet at least one of the goals of your master plan. So what we've proposed to do is to provide some mitigation on site. It's about a one-to-one -one mitigation for the area of this isolated wetland that we're proposing. So we're going to provide that area a, as a replication area, and it's going to be contingent with this existing larger bordering vegetated wetland that's out there. We can give you the details of that plan if that's something you think you folks are inclined to consider. And we're also 
possibly contemplating, like I said, a conservation restriction maybe on this large rear portion of the lots that is entirely wetlands. This is the part that's contiguous with that town property that's identified in your master space plan. We could offer a conservation restriction on this plan. We might even be able to donate a portion or all of this back area to the town to um, be adjacent to your existing lands that you, you've purchased. We could also think about some kind of contribution to the town for environmental education, which I note is another one of your benchmark goals in your master planning. Or we're open to other suggestions as well. But I wanted to come here tonight before you to sort of summarize where we're at right now and to hear back from you folks to see if this is something that is the request for a waiver that you would contemplate as part of this project or, or not. Um, Jim, do you want to uh, maybe lead off a little bit? I, I'm, I look briefly at Steve Avis's report, so I, I'm, I mean, I thought that he was sort of touching on the issues that were here, but what, why don't you go ahead and then if okay. it's all right with everybody, we'll let Jim dabble on that a little bit. Yeah. Well, be, before, I right before I respond to both um, um, IBIS Environmental's report and then your um, report based, you know, um, addressing his. I mean, we, we can, at a future date, I would suggest entertain everything you're saying mm -hmm. under another review. But I would strongly suggest now, um, I think, I think um, IBIS Environmental's report was very thorough. He is clearly stating that there are jurisdictional wetlands here that are not delineated. He's also stating that there have been no soil tests over in the, in, within the last three years, that some of the wetland flags, they're not, they're just, they're not, they're not connected. So the bottom line is, I, the bottom line is, I think, based on Steve's report anyway, and including what you're writing here, is that we don't know where the wetlands are because they're not delineated. And before we can entertain, I think we're wide open to entertain what you are suggesting um, in terms of reviewing the proposal itself. But, but according to our outside technical consultant, we don't even know where the wetlands are at the present time. I think we need to delineate that first. And that was, that was the primary purpose of why we hired us, um, IBIS Environmental, was to clarify the wetland delineation first and then go to the second step of reviewing the pros proposal. And I, I think he was pretty clear in stating that. He did, a, he did a series of soil borings and he documented the vegetation, documented the hydric soils that are present. I think, he was, I think he was very thorough. And he said that this information, for the most part, is lacking at least over the last three years for this project. So if you don't know where the wetlands are, how can you review the project? Were you involved in this before? Before it was McSherry, there was another? Yes, I was. So and we had, as part of that previous hearing, confirmed this wetland line out back. In the back. So that's done. Okay. And that's it. And I, and I would disagree, um, Jim, to some degree. The wetlands were flagged. There were pin flags out there. The first time Steve went out there, he didn't have the most recent plan so we couldn't find the flags. The second time he went out there, he apparently had the flag. I offered to be there twice. The first time he went without my presence there to lead him around. The second time I was given one day's notice. At that point I had learned that he had canceled the on-site because of the weather. I asked for me to let me know when it was rescheduled. I never found out. It was done, you know, I would have been happy to be there to clarify these things, but I ran into a brick wall, frankly, every time I tried to make some headway in that regard. So <coughs> Steve's findings were that, yes, we do have these isolated pockets out here. Did he agree with every location? Apparently not. That's did, fine. Did you show those isolated pockets in the first, um, when, when the NRAD? Yes, but we originally, we withdrew them. We withdrew them from the you request. Clarify? I don't understand that. We had filed an ANRAD for the wetlands out back as well as acknowledging that there were these isolated pockets out there. Mm -hmm. During the course of the ANRAD, we said, you know what, we're not even going to deal with these out front. We just want to get this wetland line set. So, that's, but so uh, that's what I recall. Is yes. that, so the only thing that we confirmed in that original ANRAD was that back line. That's correct. 
So That's it wasn't correct. that we agreed or disagreed that there were wetlands in the front. The That's only right. thing that we confirmed is that one line. That's right. Okay. Thank That's you. right. And then we came forward with this proposal to construct the two family home, the mm -hmm. two single family homes. And that's when the commission said, well, we need to look at these wetlands. Okay, fine. We hired Steve Ivis. He went out there twice and came to the conclusion that there are some flags that are missing. He doesn't know. He believes they're jurisdictional. Well, I think he said more than that. I think he said that there are wetlands here that are jurisdictional and that the plan doesn't show those. I don't think he didn't. I don't think he said the plan doesn't show them. He disagreed with some of the locations of the flags. Disagreed with some of the locations of the flags. Frankly, I wish I'd been there. Maybe we would have been able to straighten that out. I'm sorry. Your, your name, sir. I'm sorry, Mark McSherry. Hey, Mark. I just uh, have one question. Uh, some of the protests that were taken are they in those areas? Yes, there. You can. So my 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 uh, my thought is there are. If it's wetlands, we've done corrects that are in those areas that have correct, and I'm kind of questioning, well, are they wetlands or are they acceptable correct holes? Land where they're going to put the septic system. So I'm kind of saying, right. you know, we, we think they would develop through the correct tests over time and what is collected and this and that, and the soils were good enough to do correct tests. So I'm just wondering why now they would be wetlands. And we have and I'll, those. I'll leave that with her. Right. It, that and, and Steve had said, well, I don't have the soil results. Well, we have those. And they were submitted with the notice of intent. Okay. For the PERC test. For, For the, the PERC test. Right. They were in that same position. So that right. it's a little confusing as to why there'd be wetlands. Did, did you not find wetland soils there? I didn't look at the soils. I looked at the vegetation. Because, frankly, your definition under bordering, you, in your definition, you Take the definition for bordering vegetative. Not wetlands. just ours, the state. No, no, no. The state's different. The state has a has a definition for bordering vegetative wetland, and it has a definition for isolated land subject to flooding. But two different things. But the state also has a definition for soils. Under bordering vegetative wetland, yes, they do. Okay. Your bylaws kind of mix those two definitions together. It says, oh. Whether it's isolated or bordering, we're going to look at the vegetation, we're going to look at the soils, and we're going to come to this conclusion that it is or is not jurisdictional. So we gave Steve the soils. He had been to the site previously and looked at the vegetation. I had written a series of emails saying, here's what I found out there. He didn't like the format. He didn't like the way I, I had written it. It wasn't good enough. So. His conclusion was that he doesn't have enough information. He can't tell where the wetlands are. But I don't want to argue about that. I mean, I think that's something that maybe we can figure out and maybe put behind us and sort of move forward into, is there anything that we can do on these lots? Because as I mentioned, if the town and the Conservation Commission find these areas to be jurisdictional and you have a 100-foot setback, there's absolutely no room on the property to do anything. And so, why argue about it? I mean. But we don't, I mean, the, bottom the bottom line is, I, I think, is, uh, is he did his own independent soil analysis, found hydric soils, found vegetation. And whether the local bylaw mixes the state, is, it, I think, is irrelevant. It's a local bylaw well, that local was bylaw. written and accepted by the Attorney General yeah. that we're abided by. So it's, it's a bylaw. I think that I, I would suggest that, you know, I, I, thought, I thought it was very clear he did his own independent soils and vegetation analysis and could come up with a conclusion and made suggestions for you to, to flag these areas. But you don't, hold on, let me finish. Okay. So that was his suggestion to flag the area. So it's the commission's decision, um, do we bring Steve in here? Do we do a site visit with, with um, Ibis Environmental? Um, he made recommendations in here to connect certain flags. He made recommendations in here on, on where he found what he considered jurisdictional wetlands under the local bylaw based on soil and vegetation. I thought it was very clear. That's why I didn't ask, that's why I didn't ask anybody on the commission whether he should be here because I thought it was pretty clear. He made his recommendation, made his recommendations. You didn't accept the recommendations, but you said, quote, I wish to forego a complete review of the IRIS report. That, it, that to me is not acceptable. Well, I'm he, he, he made a recommendation, and you said, let's forego the IRIS report. I just don't think that's acceptable. Well, that's an acceptable well, response. I, I would like to 
not argue over every point in the report. That's what I mean by foregoing it. What I would like to do, which is why we've come here tonight in part, is to see if the Commission is willing to consider a waiver. If you're not going to consider a waiver, then there's no point in going back and arguing about whether the flag should be here or here or move this. That is sort of a waste of everybody's time and money. Is, is your proposal to fill in the entire front area? Yes. A everything in the front? Yes with the two individual house lots because as I mentioned there's no place on there either of these two lots that are outside of <coughs> these isolated areas and or the 100 foot buffer zone I guess we so but the point is we don't know that you we oh. don't know that because because he suggested that you connect some flag correct me you can bring me oh, back no, there no, but, but he suggested connecting the flag so we we don't know that conclusively if we know that then we can move to the next step so i would suggest that we i would suggest we need to we, we do need to have a conference with 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 ibis and in, in, um, environmental can we just let's because run to the commission okay. Yeah. okay i really Maybe there are pieces of property that I'm developing. Okay. Uh, I really don't have any questions except that I would kind of think that Jim makes sense. Yeah. Um, so when you did an ANRAD and you. Way back when? All right, and then you flagged the BBW. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I'm at a loss here for why the iso isolated wetlands on here and why wasn't that just cleared up on the ANRAD? I mean, I think it needs to be part of the ANRAD that if you're going to develop this property, the areas need to be delineated. Well, because at that point we weren't sure <coughs> what proposals would come forward. We weren't sure whether we were even going to proceed at that point, frankly, because it just seemed like, okay, we've got these areas out here that have developed over time are they going to get any bigger are they going to get any smaller are they going to dry up what's going to happen let's put that on hold let's confirm the back of this area at least we'll know okay we have this wetland we know we have to stay 100 feet away from that let's wrestle with these front w wetlands when we figure out well are we going to impact them how much are we going to impact them what is the proposal going to consist of so that's the rationale for dividing it up a problem now though because we don't know well we're, we're, we're getting there we're getting there I mean I would argue that Steve's report said that there were jurisdictional wetlands he would have preferred to see a couple of flags moved okay I mean a couple of flags moved we could do that what I'd like to know though if there's some rationale for going forward if we move all these flags and we spend a whole lot of time and money and we come back and we say gee we'd still like to pursue this you know, waiver, and you folks go, no, that's not something we do. Well, then why do we, why do we get that far? But I, I think it, to Jim's point, is we really don't know. We, I mean, we have a report from our consultant that says that there's hydric soils, as well as these isolated wetlands. You're saying you didn't check the soils; that you did it by vegetation. And the fact that we had these soil tests out there, knowing that some areas there were some upland soils. From my read of the report, it seemed like well, those are perk tests, though. That, I mean, those right. aren't checking for hydric soils. Those no, are but they have some relevance in terms of where the groundwater is, where the modeling is, where the weeping is. I mean, there's some consistency when you look at those two. Things. But in terms of determining a wetlands. I mean, those are for perking the ground to see if you can put in a septic system. I understand. System. They're not for determining where a wetlands are. I understand there's a difference. Thank you. Well, yeah, no, to me, it seems like we're, we're, we have a half an ANRAD, and we're kind of discussing what to do with what we haven't quantified. Uh, I, I feel the same way. I, uh, we've had our own um, engineer out there He's a person that, um, that I trust. Um, I'm sure that there's some differentiation between uh, your understanding and his understanding. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seems to me that if he's saying that these are jurisdictional, 
we have to go with what he says at this stage in the game. Um, I think, I mean, if, if you could, and, and as everybody else has pointed out, we have no idea what we're talking about. Well, the except in that one area that, right. uh, I mean, had, had this whole property been done at, at the same time, I can see that we wouldn't have had these issues. I mean, it would be, it, it would be right in front of us and, uh, and, and we'd know where we stood. But at this stage in the game, we don't know where we stand. Well, the same issue has come up now, I suppose, which we would have faced back then. It's the same issue. Yeah, right. And the, and the, right. And and the and money that has been, been put out in the meantime may be totally unfortunate. Maybe. Maybe. Kevin? Yeah, I agree with Tony on that. There's too much of a question of you know, where is the stuff maybe should have been done before. Well, if we, if you'd like to go back and review that, I would respectfully request that I be allowed to be there so we can talk about this and we can figure it out. That, I think, was frankly part of the problem was that had I been there, I might have been able to say to Steve, okay, if you'd like to put the flag here, let's talk about it. But instead, well, well I, I don't know that that's I, the process that we want to pursue. I, I think, obviously, there's some discrepancies between folks as to just where that is. But right. I think we're hiring a consultant to go out and state where his are, yeah. not necessarily to go to a job site and debate that. I agree. But he didn't do that. He raised more questions. So I'm a little bit concerned that another review raises more questions and more money. It's kind of like, well, can we get to the bottom of this somehow? Well, getting to the bottom of it, I think from our standpoint, would have been that it was all clarified in the beginning. Um, I'm just going to open this up to the audience. For, anybody uh, want to speak to this? So I have a, so I have a question. Okay. Would, would, you be, would you be opposed to flagging it based on Ivers Environmental's um, report. Would you be would you be open to to flag it according to the report, then and then and then let us move to the next step. I think we I think we all want to move to the next step. If he has done that, but my read of the report, frankly Jim, was that he didn't say where he would put it. He just raised questions about whether it was correct or not. Well, well that no, would be that's pretty, typically I, what no, we, I think I, he was clear. Well I think I think, okay. I think though Jim what we want oh is <coughs> typically when we have someone review your work, we have someone review this. Right. You locate the wetlands. I did the, that. In the isolated wetlands. I did that. And then he confirms or that he agrees or disagrees. So you have located all the places where you think there yes. are isolated wetlands. And we provided him a separate plan because this plan gets kind of busy. So we gave him a separate plan showing where those flags had been located. We had those, all my flags surveyed, and that plan was given to Steve. And he, and he found the flags, and then in his report, he said, Jeff says an example, he reported saying, connect flag A3 with A7. He found all your flags, I believe, and then suggested, okay, my recommendation is connect these, connect these flags based on what you put out there. Okay, we can go through that. And as I recall, the ones he did identify, I had no problem with because it was a matter of moving it you know, five feet or something, you know, but I don't recall that he had agreed or specifically identified that he had agreed with the rest of it. But oh, I'll review yeah. it again. Yeah. No, because he, yeah. my findings yeah. was that he kind of said, I don't agree, but. There were, there, were a few, there were a few minor changes in location, but for the most part, he was saying, you know, to, to make it accurate, to connect this flag with this flag. Right. So. My question was, um, Mark, I'm sure, whether the flags he's asked to connect are in the isolated wetland area only. Yes. And she's saying mm -hmm. yes. And I can point Wait. out, I think one, there was, there's a little area here. It's an area between the A series and the B series, and I can bring it up and show it to you. Yeah. Maybe it would have been helpful if we had the yeah. clear plan as well. Well, you, you folks weren't given a copy of this. This was way back when, because Steve, this was back in May. Uh -huh. So this was submitted to you back in May as part of the review. So 
he suggested in this area we connect this A with this B. I don't have any problem with that. I mean, and if that's truly his only conclusions, we don't have any problem with that. So these aren't just little pieces of wetlands in a in a um, perk hole. This is three thousand feet. Yeah. Of isolated wetlands. Yeah, it's the whole site was punched in these. When, when, when Wait, but there's a difference between what, I mean, we can say that, you know, we can see a depression in the ground where there was a perk hole and some standing water in it and probably agree that that's not a, a wetlands. But this is about 3,000 feet. But it's not a, it's not a, th there's no topography on this plan, so it's not like one big bowl out there. If in Steve's report he talks about sort of this hummock and on some of the higher spots there's upland vegetation but there's also some wetland vegetation. The site itself is like like okay. a bomb. But but I there. think what you seem to be saying before is that these were just a series of depressions that created some wetlands. But really that that piece shows about three thousand. How, how many right. square feet? 3277. Seven. Is that all the pieces? Um, no, this little one is 45 square feet, so we're up to about... The 32, is that connecting the ones that he's recommended connecting? No. 3277 so, so plus maybe it's 4, 45 plus 300, so it's about less than 400, less than 4,000. But even in my delineation, Mr. Snow, I found that okay here it's a little bit higher than here but there's some vegetation so you know okay this Let is not to and say that this is all you know one large body of water there's pockets of water and there's vegetation so it's like hmm, I don't know. what do you what do you you know how do you define these areas okay um, so Steve Ivis said that it is jurisdictional yeah um, does that does that mean that it's BBW? No, it means or, like what does that what does it veg become when it if it's Wait, I'm sorry. isolated? I don't like he's, he's got area he has he has areas of um, isolated isolated land subject to flooding, and wetland wetland areas as defined under the bylaw, which is different than the state law. But just as an example, I mean he he when he said these are wetlands under the bylaw, he said he actually named the the species. Yeah. He named it, you know, they were all fact, fact wet, fact, fact or above. Um, he, he actually named all the, all the wetland plants that he actually saw there. He talked about the soils and, and whether they were um, hydric soils. I mean, he went into, went into great detail. And then just said, for example, extend, extend the line from B8 to B10 and delete B9 because I found shrubs and slap, saplings and stories here and they're all fact or above, meaning they're all wetland plants. So, so he, he was pretty clear about what, which ones to connect. And which ones to eliminate? In the in the specific activities regulated under replicating of bordering vegetative wetland, it says that no more than 2,500 square feet may be destroyed, with replication at least twice that of the area lost. So, I guess I'm. But we don't. So we don't. Over, yeah, we, we don't know what it we is. Don't know. We, that's. The, that, that, I think that's the confusion. We don't know. We don't know whether these sites are <coughs> undevelopable because we don't specifically know the delineation based on the report from our consultant. That's the, I think that's the dilemma we're in. So are if we could find that out, we can move to the next step. Are you saying that they might be bordering? Because we have a delineation for bordering. So it's what do they become? That's what I'm asking. Under I don't your know. Bylaw, our, our bylaw, it's, they become there vegetated isn't. wetlands. They do. Because your bylaw doesn't include the word bordering. It, that's so under your that's bylaw. I just came to the realization right. that there isn't a difference in our bylaw. Yeah. Right. Actually, yeah. uh, and then there are specific criteria uh, criteria for how we would go forward if we were, but it, <coughs> but there's limits to how much is allowed. Which is why and we are over the limit. Which is why we know that we need a waiver, because if there's that condition that says no more than 2,500 square feet. There's also the condition that says you can't do with anything within the first 50 feet, and within the second, you know, 50 to 100, you're very limited. So all of those things together make this lot basically unbuildable. Do you have this? So if we could waive that one little specific section of the 2,500 square feet. Do you have? Can you? There's other things in here too about the proposed wetland must be at least 100 feet from any other property line. 
can you make that happen? I mean, what can, I mean, is there, well, or are we, we just throw in the whole entire replication of vegetated wetlands out the window and well, saying, we can't no, meet, we can't. We can't meet that standard. You can't. No, we cannot meet the one that says 50 foot setback, no touch, because 50 foot, if we, you know, did a circle around this whole isolated wetland, assuming it's one big wetland, the 50 feet puts us on the outer properties of the boundary, you know, on the outer boundary with the setback requirements. There's, so we can't meet that one. Oh. So that's it's, why I'm moving towards this that. waiver because it's like, well, if we call this jurisdictional, then there's no way we can build anything. I guess if you have a proposal you want to put forward, your choice. I, I'm not going to comment on whether we will or we won't. And we've put that forward. I've, I've put it in writing. I s submitted that last week, saying that, you know, we are proposing to do this replication in the back. We would also consider a conservation restriction or, you know, some kind of donation to the town for part of this property because it, it's adjacent to this other town property that you have. We're also open to other suggestions if there's another property in town you folks are looking to buy on the open space. You know, I'm putting it out there that we've thought of these things, but there may be other things that you folks would rather see go forward. Does anybody else need any other information? Well, I think that's where we're coming to, whether we close it or right. um, or request more information. And I can't. I mean, we could maybe request, uh, you know, something more concrete than her letter. But uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, the issue is, is do you allow somebody to make an unbuildable lot, as, if, if that were the case, uh, into a buildable one and say, oh, well, you know, We'll, we'll give you another lot over here that is buildable and we'll make it unbuildable mm -hmm. or something to the extent. And, uh, um, as, as far as I'm concerned, we've, uh, we have enough information. I don't, I don't think we need a more detailed plan than what uh, she's given us, <coughs> and, uh, what the uh, consultant has given us. Are we kind of, you're looking for an answer to this letter you wrote? Yes. That's what she, she right. wants to know whether or not we would give her a waiver to fill the whole place in and, and so I is, is that correct? Is that how I'm understanding? That's what, that's what I would well, I, interpret what I just need to know. I'm offering it as a discussion point. Right. If it's something you're willing to discuss, then let's do that. If it's not something that you folks are in the practice of doing, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. It certainly is a provision in your bylaw, and it's intended, I think, for situations like this where you cannot meet the standards. And it it <coughs> seems, seems to me that we have the information necessary. Yeah. And if we close the hearing, then we can discuss ad infinitum um, if we would allow uh, the, the proposition that she's projected to go ahead. I mean, we, we can't really, it's not something that should be discussed in public because there's no other information to give us. That's my, that's my theory. How can you, can, if you close the hearing, how can you, how can you discuss under the open meeting law, how can you discuss that with all commissioners and agree on, and agree on doing something, either accepting the conservation restriction or other things? How, how are you going to do that under the open meeting law? We would discuss the information that's been given and, and, and are we going to accept it? Are we going to deny it? Or, or are we going to accept it with, uh, uh, with provisions? And, and, and those are the things that that one discusses after the uh, the hearing has been closed, right? Yeah. 
Like just for example, like the conservation restriction they're, they're suggesting that we discuss. Well, how large? Where? And, and, where on the property? How large? And, and we would put into our, uh, if we were to accept it with, uh, with conditions, we put in the conditions what, uh, what we think we, we would want. I'm isn't, isn't that the procedure? It seems, I mean, it's always been that. But we'll have then, then when we write the orders, we will have to decide the square footage of the conservation restriction. We will have to decide all of those parameters. Yeah. And then that's going to be the order. And then they either live with it or appeal it or go to court. <laughs> right. Right. So we would decide, or the, we do not we would decide the size of the, what we want in turn. I, I, I mean, that's my, well, go ahead. Uh, and just hear my opinion. The norm is basically saying it's an unbuildable lot, no matter which way we turn. So I understand where you're coming from. Why waste the money to go back out there? The client, the applicant is saying it's unbuildable. Will you give me a waiver? And that's kind of what I feel the decision would be made on. Will you give her them, right. them a waiver or not? Right. Right. And I've laid out some options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I there may be others. So we need to determine what makes it, um, if we were to grant a waiver, we need to determine what makes it a better right. for the resource and better for the town. It's in the bylaw. It, it says that, that, that that's why specific. we pay. It is specific. Yep. And I'm not entirely convinced that filling in any wetland is and then replicating it somewhere else is a better I way understand. to go. How many, how many members have been to this site now? I couldn't even get in. It was so thick. It's I wasn't tough. even able to get into. I tried. Well, that, I was in, that, I wasn't that is in the appropriate. Problem. Problem. A lot of us went before you Right. Even. Right. No. I mean, it, this has been going on for years. Yeah. Yes. A long time ago. Yes. I mean, I've been out there, but it was. Two years ago, or something. Uh, mm -hmm. Listen, it's been going on since I got. Oh, we need to. We have a lot of other stuff ahead of us yeah. this evening. Um, okay. We can continue it and try to get back out, take a look at Ivis's thing, have the opportunity to consider that, or we can close it. Or well, the alternative is to continue it and discuss what what you want in return in terms of looking at the looking at the plan. Yeah. Describing where you would, you know, if you entertain it, where you want a conservation restriction, what kind of mitigation do you want in terms of it? But I think that discussion would be well to set aside some time for the commissioners to have the plan before you and decide what you want. Okay. Well, that's a. Yeah, and we would we would appreciate that opportunity to sit down and talk to you about how big, where, what you want. What we can well, let's, I, I think we should. If, 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 we decide, decide, if we decide, if you decide, we want to give away. That's right. I think that's the first thing we have yeah. to decide as a commission. That's right. But we have, we have to discuss if any mitigation is going to yeah. be enough in order to give this waiver. So right. I, I think well, I think we, we should continue it. But again, I don't think you make that decision in at this stage in the game. If if we want to continue it. And they and, and want to sit down with the commission and discuss it further to make the determination as to whether we want a waiver. That's one thing, in my opinion. Um, the the alternative to that is to close a hearing and make a decision. But w I I have no problems about continuing. Okay. If they have more. Well, I've only been continuing for about three years now. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I understand, and it's in it's on my floor in my office too. <laughs> I know. I agree. We're getting close. But we're getting close. We're yeah. getting close. How much to the time next, to the next step? <laughs> How much time do we want? When's our next meeting? The twenty second. Does that give anybody an opportunity to? Do, do you do you, do you want the applicant to be a little bit more specific in actually coming in with the proposal and then you respond to it and shrink it and enlarge it? Do you want them to lay something down and, re and respond to it? Be a I think it'd be easier to respond to the proposal yeah. than come up with it on our own. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, and we're, we're 
the rest of the property is not something we're ever contemplating using. So frankly, well, that would be. Well, nobody else is either because no, no. it's all weapons. No, well, <laughs> and it, yeah. it's useless. Doing something with that is of yeah. limited value, it seems to me. Okay. Well, it's yeah, part of the so. town's master plan. I'm just <laughs> that was something that I saw and thought, okay, that's that that's that lot. <laughs> and well, I'd be. Is is are we? Do we want to continue this for two weeks or a month? Uh, um, it's up to you, folks. If you think you need time to think about some options, how how, how much time would you need to? Uh, if if if, you, if the commission decides, I think I think you just heard me. I think it will be easier for them to respond to okay. a proposal by you. I'm just throwing that out, right. and, then, and then let them massage it the way they feel appropriate. How long? Right. And if they accept that, how long would you need to put something like that together? Two weeks. I could do it within two weeks, but um, I don't want the commission to feel like oh, you know pressure here if you <coughs> you know two weeks I could do it let's put it that way it makes any difference I won't be here two weeks um, what's the meeting after that <laughs> I'm gonna fat before election day I just continue it to November <laughs> what if you still not made up your mind second Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Norton, 159 Rear Glades Road. You sure you're here? Yeah. On behalf of uh, Christopher and Jane Norton, the applicant and property owner. The properties at 159R Glades Road consists of 4,934 square <coughs> feet. The property line is shown in bold. The wetlands are a salt marsh as shown here in the blue. That was delineated by Brad Holmes, a professional wetland scientist. Off of that, we have a 25 foot and a 50 foot setback shown in red and we have the 100 foot setback. The entire site is within the 100 foot buffer zone. The Board of Health has approved this plan and what we're proposing to do is we're proposing to reroute the plumbing from the back of the house to now exit the side of the house into a new hoot aerobic treatment tank, a new pump chamber, and then a pressure dosed drip irrigation system in the front yard. The tanks are monolithically constructed. They're outside of the 25-foot setback. The leaching system is at 43 feet off of the wetland line. Uh, we had located it in that location. We obviously didn't have room in the, the rear or the side yards. The front yard was the only location we had. Uh, this portion of the yard you'll see is the gravel access driveway for the site. This is the location that made the most sense for us. It's all lawn surface right now. We're going to restore it with lawn surface. We're proposing a straw wattle at the limit of work for the excavation for the tanks. Uh, we're also proposing a silt fence out back when we fill in the existing cesspool under the deck. As stated, the Board of Health has approved this plan. DEP had no comments. <coughs> okay. No. Richard? Pretty clear. Uh, I just have a curiosity question. How long would this last? This? Yeah. I, I tell my clients to uh, expect somewhere between 25 and 30 years out of a subject, but Hard they often time lasts longer. What happens when it's, well, there's no more space on the property? Will you be able to rebuild it in the same place? Yeah. Okay. I'm so. just curious. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Isn't there an outstanding um, uh, conditions on this property? On 159? On 159? I think, think it's 150. I think I just filed 140. It's 149. What's the name? I filed no, something no, with her no, certificate no, today. Not, it doesn't sound right. That's yeah. No. It's, it's not. I think it's 149 R that we have something. Okay. 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 No I thought sure. it was 150. I, I agree. But it's a no, okay. Anybody okay. in the audience? No. I make a motion to close. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Kent Street Court Cabal, 25 mil um, dwarf bulb kit. We got some green cards? Let's hope so. Oh, I see them. <laughs> on October 10, 2012, 6.50 p.m., the Town Officer Drew Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Kent Street Corp. Ken DeVal to repair a bulkhead on property located at 25 Mill Wharf Plaza, situated at Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Far away. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky. I'm an environmental lawyer, and I've worked with Ken Street Corporation and Mr. Duval in the past. As you're well aware, this matter was on for hearing, but unfortunately could not go forward because the green cards were not presented. So we fixed that problem. It's a very basic bulkhead repair. You may have seen uh, the failed bulkhead at the marina. Um, it's located here. Here's the, the No Wharf uh, restaurant, and it's this side of the bulkhead that was leaning over. Uh, Kent Street Corp uh, performed some temporary repairs to stabilize that but we need an order of conditions in order to finish those repairs. And the repairs are fairly straightforward. Um, they're going to preserve the existing sheet piling, but replace the dead man anchors. Um, so there'll be new uh, dead man uh, sheet piling uh, driven, and then we connected by rod to the existing sheet piling. So we'll straighten everything out and anchor it so it's a fairly straightforward uh, project. Um, I think that this project actually does qualify as a limited project under 310 CMR 1024-7C2, which is the limited project provision for the maintenance and repair of existing <coughs> pier structures that existed prior to 1987. I quickly reviewed aerial photographs going back to the 60s. This bulk has, has existed in some form or fashion all the way back as far as I could tell by reviewing the aerial photographs. Uh, as a limited project, would not need to strictly comply with the performance standards under either the Wetlands Protection Act or your local bylaw. Regardless, um, it does actually meet the performance standard. Um, this is located, uh, this, the marina in this area is located within your uh, FEMA AE zone. Uh, therefore, you're located within land subject to coastal storm flowage. As you're well aware, there actually is no performance standard for work within the land subject to coastal storm flowage under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, you do have a, a performance standard under the local bylaw at SWR 1038. And I think you'll agree that uh, this repair will not have an adverse effect by increasing the elevation or the velocity of flood waters. Um, and there will also be no increased flows due to a change in drainage or flow characteristics. Nothing is going to change. Uh, change. We're just re-anchoring that bulkhead sheet piling. Uh, we're not proposing anything new, so we don't need to comply with either the stormwater regulations in the Wetlands Protection Act for new projects or with your stormwater <coughs> bylaw. So we're asking for an order of conditions to approve these repairs. And we're happy to answer any questions. Curiosity question. I'm sorry. Does this on the map that stops does this property go all the way to the coast, uh, the harbor master building? Does, it, does you own that? Uh, this is actually. Yes, this, it this is. Yes. It's complicated. It's actually a condominium. Yeah. Um, right. The, the Kent Street Corporation only owns one of the condominium units and has a dedicated parking space within a common area. So this whole thing is a condominium common area. The marina is this portion plus a small portion where the existing office exists. You're going to have to take up all the, the asphalt that's there and dig down. What are you going to do with all that material during the process? Well, uh, any material would have to be removed and new asphalt put in place. Yeah. I mean, you know, that would get recycled. At the, at the time, or are you going to leave it there? Well, at the time, that would that would be removed. At the time. 
Right. Obviously, this needs to be done quickly. We're in an AE flood zone. Uh, you can't have an open construction site for any extended period of time. Um, it's, as I said, the repairs are fairly straightforward. So, Ken, do you have a sense of how long it would actually take? Uh, this thing are approximately between a week and two weeks. <coughs> I, think you, I mean, you're going to have to stockpile some material on the existing paving. It would be minimal at, at best. The asphalt's going to go. You know, because it's no good, you take it to the asphalt plant and they recycle it themselves. Right. But you're going to have a little bit of gravel and stuff that it might would be, be small piles. It would not be a large pile at all. And does this require, what is it, Part 91 approval? Uh, no, you're, uh, there's a cha an existing Chapter 91 license uh, for um, this area. Um, you're allowed to perform routine maintenance as part of your Chapter 91 license. So I don't believe that we need any additional authorization from DEP. Okay. Okay. No question. Uh, just in terms of just in terms of the, the fill pile that you'll be putting somewhere, you probably have to bring more things in, in there as well. But they'll re, you'll be required to put some erosion control, siltation barrier, hay bale barrier around anything you're going to keep there, just to keep it. In. That'll be, okay. that'll be in the order. It's, it's pretty straightforward. You're also going to weld some pieces, I believe, onto the onto the bulkhead where some of the material is leaking out, leaching out. Yeah, there's one the two-inch hole that, that will be capped. Because originally, I, originally you thought that it may have been undermined, but that but th that's not the case. It's leaching out because the, the the material had collapsed behind it. Yes, it needs to be repaired. No question, it needs to be repaired quickly. I, I agree with you. There's no problem with the project, but it's not it's not. Not undermined. Correct. It's not. Yeah. Pretty deep straightforward. Deep that, how, um, how deep? Of the Twelve feet. Twelve feet or refusal. Okay. Anybody in the audience? I have one question. Over off of Edward Foster Road, there's like one lone <laughs> concrete uh, yes. dock. That was probably a remnant from the old dock system. From the one is correct. Yeah. Is there any way to get that removed? When I was recycling, I offered to take it if Mark could pull it off of off of the reeds. Uh, he never tried. The Mark harbor the harbormaster. The harbormaster. Whose float is it? I don't know. It's from the previous. It's from owner. the previous owner. Oh, I mean, I have since recycled <laughs> almost 200 blocks. And I don't have any blocks left anymore. I would not. I, it would be cost prohibitive. It would be a couple thousand dollars unless you can get that, convince Dave Glancy for some more goodwill. Because if we get, if we get, if you had a crane there doing that work and they could just hoist it out of the water, it would just. Be, I just been looking at that thing for years. So would I. And uh, when I saw Steve Warner come in here the other night with you, I was going to ask him if he would um, want to pick that up. Do you think it will float? I mean, will it? It should float. Well, we'll uh, <laughs> if you get to get <laughs> there's a lawyer's answer. <laughs> I, I, I'm being quiet throughout this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to work with Mark on that while I was recycling them. Okay. Uh, and I've been done for a year. I mean, I can ask Steve Warner if he's willing to do it. Okay. If you had machinery there that could lift it out of the water and they got it there or something, yeah. maybe we could find a place for it or something. Yeah, I walk by it every weekend. Okay. All right. Motion. To I make a motion to close. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, just because we made you come back with the green cards, Ken. Is it Marinelli? Am I saying that right, Craig? Marinelli, Hillcrest Road, new building. On October 10th at 7 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General <coughs> Laws and Section 3070 Town and Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Anthony V. Marinelli to construct a new dwelling on property located at Hillcrest Road, situated butters and other interested parties invited to attend. Good evening again for the record, Greg Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering. 
representing Antonio Marinelli. This is a notice of intent for a proposed single family home located on Hillcrest Road. This property was before you approximately two months ago with an AMRAD filing. The bordering vegetated wetland shown on this plan in blue was approved by this commission uh, just last <coughs> week. The property in total that we're looking at developing is 40,999 square feet. And off of the BBW line, we have the 50 foot town of Situate no disturb zone. And then in green, we have the 100 foot wetland buffer zone. Um, what we've proposed here is a new single family residence. The single family home foundation extends um, it's 51 and a half feet off of the BBW line. Um, this was the minimum setback that we had off of Hillcrest Road. There's a 30 foot front yard setback. So we pushed the house as far forward as we can on this property. The septic system is located outside of the 50 foot buffer zone. The septic system is located at a distance of 64 feet from the wetland. And then we're proposing a gravel access driveway off of Hillcrest Road here. Utility connections, water and electric will be to Hillcrest Road. Um, grading for the site, there's no uh, grading to the left or to the right of the house that encroaches in the 50. We maintain the 50 foot side yard, um, 50 foot buffer zones. This is a walkout basement in the back. And what we are proposing is we are proposing in the backyard to do our stormwater mitigation. We are picking up all the roof leaders, directing those into a series of underground chambers. Um, those chambers being located at 10 feet off of the foundation um, make it so that this project encroaches into the 50 foot buffer. We're maintaining a minimum of 40 feet setback from the BBW. <coughs> the alteration is highlighted in yellow on this plan. It's a total of 530 square feet. What we've proposed uh, for this project is we've proposed two areas, um, 600 square feet in total uh, over here along Seymour Road and over here along George's Road uh, to do enhancement plantings in the buffer zone. <coughs> the wetland report that was submitted during the NRAD by Brad Holmes states that much of the buffer zone uh, consisted of uh, non-native invasive plants, Japanese knotweed, multi-flora rose, et cetera. What we're proposing is um, planting of high bush blueberry, which is, an, which is a native plant that will also provide food source um, to offset the 530 square feet. It's more than a two to one ratio of um, enhancement to alteration. The drainage, we've submitted a drainage report outlining compliance with the 10 standards of the DEP stormwater management policy. Um, standard one, uh, we're not creating any new discharges. All of the runoff from this site currently drains toward the BBW line. And in its post-development condition, it will continue to drain um, toward the BBW line. You'll notice that along the side yard, we have a swale coming down. And out here in Hillcrest Road is elevation 39. Down at the BBW, we're at elevation 36. So it's a very gently sloping site. But the water continues to be conveyed in the same direction as the pre-development condition. The pre and post rates and volumes of runoff are maintained for the 2, the 10, the 25, and the 100 year storm event. Uh, we do that by minimizing the impervious surfaces. Um, we're not proposing a, a paved driveway. We have a gravel driveway surface here. Hillcrest Road itself is a gravel surface. Um, and then by taking all of the roof leaders and directing them into the series of drywall mm -hmm. chambers. Standard three is the annual recharge to groundwater. The standards require a total of 29.6 cubic feet of stormwater to be infiltrated. We're infiltrating 114 cubic feet. Um, we've also included as part of this document a uh, maintenance and inspection program for the underground chambers so any homeowners in the future would know how to maintain that system or what to look for while inspecting it. <coughs> DEP had no comments uh, regarding this submittal. The Board of Health has not approved this plan yet. They are waiting for a copy of my DEP soil evaluator logs 
the design itself, they are perfectly fine with. They just need a copy of the soil evaluation logs, which we sent in to them. I guess I turn it over for questions and comments. <coughs> okay. I have a question here. What invasive species are you saying that in these two spots there, there's invasive species growing now, or is it briars? Basically, throughout the entire 100-foot buffer zone right now yeah. is significant invasive species um, through, throughout the entire 100-foot buffer. And so as part, as part of the um, request for the, for the waiver in looking at this site on a case-by-case -case basis for doing work in the 50-foot buffer, the commission needs to look at the quality of that buffer. And I guess my point is, is that the quality is, is these are not native plantings. The, this is not a, um, not, not a very strong habitat, not a very strong buffer zone. And so by planting the native plants, we're not only getting that, but we're also getting a food source that doesn't exist. Okay, my only concern is, like we saw down the Marine Park, yep. that the Phragmatic Mighties came right back and are suffocating all the plants they put in. And I'd hate to see that ha happen here. I don't know how you stop it. Um, but I also, um, with this is a virgin piece of land, okay, it hasn't been touched. And um, I kind of feel as though we need something to even build on this lot because the whole thing is in the 100 foot. And that's under our discretion, whether or not. Um, I don't know what. I'm not asking for anything in particular, but I kind of feel as though where it is a virgin piece and um, we should get something back for that 100 feet in the 100. But that's just me. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, I agree with Penny. More than 1,200 feet of bluebirds. Um, why did you choose to do the dry basins to catch the storm water? Why? Yeah. Well, we have out, out in front, we have all our utility services, the, the septic tank, the water service, the electric service coming in. And on the sides of the house, on this side, we have the, the primary septic system we're building. Over here, we have the reserve septic system area. So we needed an area outside of the front and side yards here. So that kind of pushed us into the back. <coughs> and there's a, there's a couple of options on what you can do for an infiltration system. We could have done an open, uh, an open like a smaller detention basin or rain garden style. Um, <laughs> but we, we felt that having a subsurface system that the chambers themselves <coughs> you know, is 100% void space in there and because the runoff we're sending there is clean runoff. It's coming off the roof. It's not off a driveway. Well, so there really doesn't need to be any treatment to it. How deep are the chambers? Uh, one foot below the ground surface. And then how deep do they go? They're thir 13 inches in height. So they're not. It's a it's an arc chamber like you'd see for a um, subsurface drainage system under a parking lot. Uh, they're made out of plastic. Um, it's a 13 inch high by three foot wide arced chamber system. So it's because what I'm what I'm seeing here is is that when you take water from draining the the land does slope gradually into the wetland when you take that water away from it it dries out the wetland which actually allows more invasive species to come in when the water is there only certain species grow so we would have more native species if it was wetter and so what i'm wondering is is, is that going to take water from the normal course of the flow and stop it from actually hitting and getting into the wetland and so if there's going to be an enhancement might it not be better to have it be a rain garden filled with native species or some sort of swale that gradually allows the water to flow into the wetlands instead of just I, I'm not entirely sure of how your chambers actually work so if, if you think that they're gonna be the same as <coughs> something more natural then 
you know, there, there are a couple things to touch on with what you just said there. One is um, by grading something out to the surface, more like a, a basin or a rain garden, it's taking up more of a, of a surface area as opposed to if I have a, a buried structure. And so where I, where I already am encroaching in that 50, I was really trying to limit our disturbance in that regard. The second piece kind of is that when we analyzed the stormwater for this site, what we did is we took the wetland line here and we analyzed that as the downstream design point. Okay. Typically when you analyze a site, you analyze where, where the property line would be to show that you're not increasing the runoff off of your property onto your neighbor's property. In this site, all of the stormwater on the site drains to a wetland which is already on our site. And so rather than claim a property line somewhere down here at Hadley Road and have the calculations totally um, washed out by the fact that now we have a huge chunk of undeveloped area, we, on, we only analyze this area proposed for development. And what I'm getting at is right, right here at the wetland line, if you look at the difference in our pre versus post development rates of runoff, um, you'll see that we're within a couple of hundredths of a cubic foot for all of the storm events, and that we're out into the thousandths place for the volume of water that we're sending here. So we are holding some back. We have to, but we're not we're we're not holding back a significant amount of water. It's it's out in the hundredths and thousandths place of the calculations. Um, I know you've heard me say it before. I just I'm never in favor of enhancing the buffer zone. <laughs> it's just not. It's like let's go into the buffer and and I and I understand that there's invasives. I actually have to go to the site and look at it myself sure. then and see if that's going to be our justification because we're trying to enhance. I want to see the invasives and I want to see that that's what we're actually doing. I, I'm sorry I drove there when you had the ANRAD in, but I didn't look at it for that. I. It just wasn't what I was looking for. Absolutely. Um. I, you know, I think if we're, we, we, we developed this looking at um, some properties on Pollitt Street and some properties on Greenfield Lane that had been approved with, you know, mitigation plantings for work in the 50. And that's kind of how we developed this. We're certainly open if there's other forms of mitigation, or if, if uh, I know the commission has entertained off-site mitigation in certain scenarios, you know, we're certainly open to suggestions if there's something that you think might be a little more appropriate. I you know it's, it's I, our job to put it forward, but yeah. you can give us some feedback. I hate to say this, but the Hollett Street site, they didn't do enough. They should have cleared the whole lot of the thing in the whole buffer because the invasives are so crazy in there that everything they planted is going to be overrun in a matter of no time. And I don't want to say that you should go and clear the whole thing and try and recreate a pristine environment. The invasives are there. So I, that's like I'm not even entirely sure that it's good enough justification because there's invasives in every lot on town. Sure. So I think we do need to consider that whether it's an enhancement, if it's truly an enhancement. I mean, I understand there's a food source, but. Is it enough? That's what I'm wondering. Are they even going to survive, or are they just going to get overrun? And then, does that justify building a house in in the in a flood zone too? It's in a flood zone. This, uh, this is not in flood zone. It's not zone X. No. Yeah. This site? is zone. This is zone X, which zone means X above is above the 500 year flood plain. All right. So it's out of. All right. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to know that actually. Thanks for answering. Yep. I keep wondering about. That. There's nothing in there that says what Zone X is. <laughs> <laughs> just calls it Zone X. Yeah, it just calls it Zone X. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds the scary. Is disturbance you're going to do in the backyard that section that you're going to loom and seed? Or, yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be and the rest is just going to all be left natural. Okay. Right. Yep. Hit the hit that again, Greg. What so are you the, doing? Uh, the area of disturbance here in yellow, what yep. we're proposing to restore that with is uh, grass seed, loam okay. seed over that. So and 
over over here we're not encroaching on the 50 and we actually were proposing a, a stone wall be built right along the 50 foot line so that'll prevent any encroachment on that side that's that's the active side yard that they'll use over here with the septic system we have a mound coming down from the septic system and meeting grade at the 50 foot buffer zone this this area here between 50 and 60 feet because it's sloped for the septic system that's not really usable yard space there's not much potential for encroachment on this side but on this side we, we do have that defining wall at the 50. so you're not going to you're you're not going to be you don't propose any cutting or anything in that 50 foot area no well, they're going to accept in that except that right. yellow yeah, little, in that yeah. small segment correct so when the blueberries that you're proposing to go in you're just going to plant them in what's already there yeah, because the blueberries are more of a, you know, are more of a shrub. We're going to leave all the overstory growth that's there, um, and we can plant those blueberries around the existing vegetation. Um, would would you would your client be uh, adverse to uh, to a fencing along the entire area? I don't think so. So. Along the back, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kevin? Jim? We've seen so many of these projects come forward. I think you hit the nail on the head. You hit a hot spot in my, in my thinking as well, Tom, Todd. Um, this, these are the kind of projects that we're gonna that you've been seeing. These are the kind of projects we're gonna continue to see. Every project that comes forward says the same thing you just articulated. We have so many invasive species, let's take them all out of there. Let's give you some plantings. We're having this here in the same story. I think your suggestion about going out there and walking the site, you, your high, high bush blueberries won't survive on the, on the, uh, wet, on the east side. You, you, you can't even get in there. I went, I went in there, but it's all briar. They won't survive. The, 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 the underbrush is so thick, you'll have to take some out if you want the blueberries to survive. So I, I think we're hearing a lot about we'll do this in the buffer zone. I think, I think we need to take a couple of site visits with the wetland scientists and have them explain <coughs> to us what the invasive species are, how dense they are, where the mitigation is going, rather than just looking at a piece of paper. Because this is what you're going to continue to see from now on. Yeah. In terms of the 50-foot buffer, um, your bylaw suggests that, um, that plants uh, that buffer zone plants be planted every four foot, four feet on center along the entire 50 foot buffer. So this is a perfect candidate for that. The rain garden, I think, would be a whole lot better than having grass lawn. I think for the homeowner, if I were the homeowner, I'd rather the grass lawn. But we're not talking about that. We're talking uh, encroaching into the 50 foot buffer. So not only a fence, but there's a requirement that that buffer zone plantings be put on the 50 in the 50 foot along the 50 foot line when appropriate. Um, with buffer zone plants. If you want to add a fence to it, that's fine, but the, the plantings at four foot centers will create uh, you know, a nice vegetated buffer. But I, you know, and, I, and we've heard this repeatedly, I'd like to go and walk the site myself with the wetland scientists and have them explain exactly what they're doing and see, it, see if it's valid. Just one or two times so we can educate ourselves. Are we really adding value to wildlife habitat? I have a big question about whether we're really adding any value by doing these little isolated pockets here. The one on the, um, whatever side it is, the one on the north side, I think there's, there's some clearings there that might be pretty decent for some mitigation, but it, I, I don't think it's gonna work. On the south side, it's not gonna survive. It was tough getting in there. I think that's, it, you know, it's all briar. Well, plus but the it's tough animals in need there, so the briar. The little critters need the briars. I think it's excellent you know? wildlife habitat as, as it is. Yeah. Invasives, maybe they could thin the invasives out and, and it's something we're going to be chasing for the rest of our lives because there is so much. But we're making so many decisions based on a white piece of paper when we're going out on our own when we don't really have enough information or enough knowledge on our own. I suggest this might be a good candidate to go walk the site and have it explained to us. That will help us for future projects because this is what we're going to continue to see in the future. So I think you hit the nail right on the head, Todd. Huh? I agree. I think your, your comments are well taken. I, uh, it's not a particularly attractive piece of property as it exists, the way I look at it. But um, I hear what you're saying, and, and I have no problem with a, with a site visit either if I'm here. I, agree. I, would love to, I would love to see how it can be done. Yeah, you have it explained in the field. So you're that site visit, you'd like to have it with their environmental consultant Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Whoever can do that. Yeah. And you know, and the legitimacy is I, you know, 
I'm not the environmental scientist, but I do question whether they'll even survive because of the overstory and the, and the thick brush that's in there. <coughs> we need, I think we need to educate ourselves because these are the type of, we've, and we've, I've seen so many of them, clear the whole 50-foot buffer and then, they, and then come in and put their own plants in there. Is that really valid? Is that adding value? I, I, I question it. But I'm not, the, I'm not a wildlife habitat specialist, so we need, you know, it's time we start questioning these things, I think. Instead of just tearing up. Okay. But so we're going to continue this um, to do that. And you don't have um, DEP or Board of Health anyways. They were waiting on a copy of the park tests. But okay. design-wise, they're okay. Um, but we're, we're fine continuing it. Just let us know when you want us there for a site walk. And, um, so two, two weeks, the 22nd? Well, is that going to give us enough time? Um, can, we, I mean, can, we, can we go on the site visit? Like, I mean, I'll just throw it out next Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. And, then, and then when they come for the continuance, you should have your Board of Health approval by then. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Do you have in the audience for this project, Hillcrest? <coughs> I make a motion to continue um, the Hillcrest um, to... October 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. 22nd. I got everything here. 22nd. Yeah, but I can't find my book. Oh, well, that's technicality. <laughs> October 22nd, it's 6, it's, um, it's 7. Oh, I'm sorry. It's at 7 o'clock on the 22nd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. It was right in front of me. Yeah. Let us know when. I better say this last name right. Vincenzi. Vincesi. Vincesi. <laughs> Just say Clap Road, Dirt Drive. <laughs> on, October, on October 10th, 2012, 715, the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700. Town of Situa Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Patricia A. Vincenzi, Town Administrator, to construct a gravel driveway to access municipal land on property located on Clap Road, Situa to Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. I think before you start, I think we want to make this pretty clear what this is about. Um, this is the Crosby property. Um, and this is a new access road into property that the town of Situate has agreed to purchase under the Community Preservation Act, and it's 40, 41 acres of land that will become open space uh, for the town of Situate. It's adjacent to the Appleton Field project. So the town administrator is the applicant. The Conservation Commission is the proponent in purchasing this property and it'll become under our care and custody once it's purchased. Right now the property is in the ownership of the Crosby family. Um, so just so that everyone is, is aware of how this sort of plays out. Um, I also received a notice as um, being within so many feet. I don't believe I'm directly abutting the property. Well, oh, I am, I guess. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously would be glad to give any input. I've worked at putting this in. If, if the members would prefer that I didn't vote, that I should recluse myself, um, that's uh, maybe for anybody else to decide. Maybe it's best that I don't. But I. I've been involved in trying to get this figured out how this all works, and I think I can help explain some of that. But maybe for because I'm in a butter. Um, I think you should ask the audience because I don't think any of us have, have an issue that so you're going to twist um, it Well, I don't want to skew anybody no. uh, on this, but uh, certainly I'm in favor of it. I don't have any axe to grind with it at all, but. Um, that's, I just want that all on the table. Okay. I think you should recuse yourself, Frank. Right? So From the vote? Yeah. Okay. I do. I just think it's 
That's so fine with me. It's a legal thing to do. Well, from, from the vote, but can he be involved right, yeah. in the discussion? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm not yeah, opposed to him. He can be in this yeah, discussion. Just, just don't okay. vote. Okay. Just so we don't, you know, yeah. with me. Dot, our okay. dot our I's, cross our T's. Okay. Then why don't, actually, why don't you kind of run this All piece? Right. Maybe I should have um, let you read that out. Did you, uh, you explained everything that you're, you're going to. We didn't even do that. Yet. Go yeah. ahead. We haven't done okay. anything okay. yet. It was too busy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You can leave now. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> go ahead. Thanks for the I got the picture. <laughs> um, this is a notice of intent to create an access road onto land that the town is going to be purchasing with its CPC funds. The cover sheet here, the plan set is made up of four pages. The cover sheet shows the property in its entirety. Um, as Frank mentioned, it's approximately 41 acres. 33 acres of that is upland area. So a significant piece for the town. It's directly adjacent to the Appleton Field, which is, which is right in this area. You see Thomas Clapp Road to the north, uh, the property boundary in bold here. South Swamp uh, over here to the east. The focus of the discussion is in this area. This is where the gravel access will be off of Clap Road. And that's what I've constructed by taping together sheets two and three of the plan set. So you can see it on one piece. <coughs> so to orient you here, Clap Road is at the, the top of the property, the, the property that the town is purchasing. This is the property line here. And it continues on back. Uh, this is the northern property line here. So this is being permitted as a limited project. All of the frontage along Clap Road has wetlands across it. Uh, the wetland line in blue um, it extends, extends across. That should be highlighted in blue. Uh, this was delineated last December by Paul Shea, professional wetland scientist, environmental uh, consultant. This is located in an area mapped as endangered species, priority, and estimated habitat. We have filed with the NHESP organization. I have not heard back uh, with their approval at this point, but I expect that we will get approval. This is a very small project in the grand scheme of things, and it is to preserve a significant amount of open space. I hope to have that approval uh, within the next month. The details. We're proposing our access way right here along the western property line and coming in. This is a 12-foot gravel access up to a parking lot up here where we'll have parking spaces for 10 vehicles. This is, again, a gravel parking area. Uh, it's 12 feet wide uh, with two-foot shoulders on either side. So effectively, we have 16 feet of width uh, from Clap Road up to the parking area. We've kind of meandered it as best we could around significant trees and vegetation that was out there. Uh, we're maintaining the stone walls along the property lines. Out here at Clap Road, we've proposed a little bit of a wider entrance so that we have one additional parking spot out here in an upland area. And we're proposing an access gate actually across this driveway so that um, access can be restricted at certain times to prevent Friday night parties up here. Uh, you know, but on, on weekends and other times, it, the gate would be, would open, be for, open for access. Uh, but that way, we have at least one parking area out on the, on the main thoroughfare for people to enjoy the property. The area that we're proposing here in yellow, this is a wetland alteration area. It's an alteration of 4,300 square feet. Uh, this was the area that we thought was the, was the, the best location, not only uh, alteration-wise, but also drainage-wise in laying this out. <coughs> we do have, you know, for drainage, this is a BBW. We have connected it from either side of the roadway with a series of five culverts underneath the roadway. The culverts are 24 inches in diameter, so they'll serve not only as drainage culverts, but also uh, for wildlife crossing as well. The 4,300 square feet, we're proposing a replication area. That replication area is 5,100 square feet. Uh, <coughs> that's shown here in the hatched green location. And 
we had also provided as part of our submittal a detailed planting description and a detailed planting list of that replication area. That right here. You'll see that we've listed out a total of 41 trees, 92 shrubs, uh, and 24 herbaceous species uh, that are native to the area. Uh, and then right in here, this transition area that we're creating between the road and the replication area, we plant with a conservation wildlife seed mix shown there. Basically when this area gets constructed, the soil would be excavated um, to within 12 inches of groundwater, which is, which is only down about 12 inches, 18 inches. We take that soil, um, add organic to it, and do the, do the plantings. They'd be monitored for a period of two years um, to show that they, that they grow properly. The roadway itself, um, you'll look at the grading on it. The grading of the roadway, it's primarily within uh, one to three feet of what existing grade is. The roadway itself will be slightly elevated. Um, you know, at this, at this first culvert here, uh, existing grade is 108. We're coming up to 110. That's to maintain the elevations over the culvert um, and to maintain basically a nice flat gravel roadway coming into this property. Um, the parking lot area is located entirely outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, I guess I'd turn it over for questions and comments. Penny. Where exactly is the applicant field in relationship to the parking lot? Right, right here. And I know... It, it, yep. Okay. I'm wondering if I show you the overall picture, that might be better. Yeah, sure. Wait. So right here is the Appleton Field piece that the town owns. And right here is the end of the parking lot. How this, how this has laid out, the, the property has kind of an extensive trail network and cart yeah, paths through it right now. Okay. And this, this is being permitted to get the town up to and out of the 100-foot buffer zone. I think it's the intent to someday continue to connect into one of those cart paths to gain access to that. Can I just, that, not someday, this will be part of, this will be yeah, the new well, access. That, that, that's my concern. Okay. This but, will be the new access to the Appleton Field. Okay. Yeah. What will happen to the exi existing access to Appleton Field? We won't use it anymore. Yeah. Existing access to Appleton Field is over private property of the, of the Beals and Crosbys, and that will remain in their ownership. Uh, as part of giving this to the town, from what I understand, they've requested that We're access be, they sold, no. be moved. Sold. So, they, oh, so not to come through that already existing road? Oh, all right. That's all right. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. One thing I think I want to just state is that this piece of land, it connects with the South Swamp. It's a very, this is one of the ones where I instantly would give a wave or two that you are filling up front there because of um, the value for this property, for the town, for the recreation, but mostly for the protection of the water resource area and the animals out there. I mean, this is a fine piece of property. And I, in re reading your restoration plan um, for the wetlands, this is, it is excellent. I am thrilled with it. You know, the brush piles, the, the, the logs, and try, trying to make it something that looks like it wasn't just done yesterday that's been there so the animals will use it. I am, um, I think it's really, really great what you've done and what you've shown, shown us this day. My only concern was that this will be the access to go into the African field that's great. I, I don't really have, I think you covered everything. So you, you did touch on one thing. A significant portion of this, not the proposed project, but the property is within the floodplain and watershed yeah. protection district. So yeah. we are now gaining control over that. That line is shown. Um, here in blue, 
you know, not that we're proposing any work in it, but now the town will have ownership of, you know, that just extra protection. Nice. And then, yeah. uh, as Penny stated, it's we really did nice. submit as part of the notice of intent a uh, a written narrative to go along with the planting plan. And yeah, we did have construction of um, different different kind of piles of, of brush and fallen over trees. So we're going to try to reuse some of the material that we <coughs> cut from the road to create habitats and little burrows you know, within the replication areas too, which that's important. I'm very impressed with that. I'm good. Oh, nice. So, Todd, you're good. 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 I'm good. No questions. Tell me. What is this uh, sort of cattywampus rectangle uh, that goes down the west side of the ownership? Like uh, this? Yeah, that, yeah, there you go. It's a piece of land. <laughs> Thank you. That's not included in our piece. It's that not is included a, uh, in our piece. Yeah, that is a separate piece of land that um, that, they, that, that they currently own, the Crosbys, that they're going to retain ownership of that. That is not included. Um, oh, okay. That's that's why our road, you know, respects that uh, northern property line of theirs. Absolutely, and and why it has to go in so far uh, to get out of the uh, the uh, hundred foot buffer to the parking lot. Correct. Okay, that answers that question. Um, why? This goes back a little bit to what Jim was saying on that on the prior property. Um, do we need that replication, that 5,100 feet of replication? Um, do we have to disturb that entire area? Um, well, at, at, at a minimum, the, the commission has to require a one-to-one. -one. That's what's required. By we have a whole town. I'm, I'm talking about that 5,100 square yep. feet. Why that needs to be done there? Um, right. If I understand this, is that I'm just still trying to figure out exactly where this is. You know that big stand of pines in there. They're, is they that would, on that side? Uh, they'd be further in in from the parking lot going um, probably south. It's the side south of the parking lot. So I was thinking it was up that way further. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I want to read the state requirements, but I'm almost certain that the state's going to make you do a one-to-one -one replication. If you're losing BBW, you're going to have to re replace that at a one-to-one -one ratio. The town's requirements under the local bylaw are for a two-to-one replication. So I think it certainly is possible to reduce the 5,100 down to the 4,300 that we're altering. Um, and, you know, you bring up the point of other properties in town, you know, off-site mitigation. Um, if, if the town wanted to hold us to a two-to-one replication or something more than the minimum by the state, we'd certainly be open to talking about off-site mitigation. So the question is, is really more basic than that. Forget the, forget the number of square feet. Yeah. I'm talking about that that's in the checkered green. Yeah. Why does it have to be there? Opened up, bared, and, and, and replanted. Can I yeah. just, yeah, one ahead. of the considerations when we're doing this, obviously this is a piece of property that the commission <coughs> will be opening up access to the public. Um, hopefully this is going to be a place where um, we can do nature walks where we can explain various things in time through the Conway School, which we'll discuss later. We're going to be talking about various programs, maybe different wildlife habitat, things like that. To me, this would be another example of what the Commission does. And when people come to look at this piece of property, it would be so easy to say, here's a piece of wetlands replication, and this is how it works, and it's actually something that we can monitor easily. It'll be on the access coming into uh, a piece of property that we control. So I, I think it's not a bad spot. It, it's certainly going to be something that we'll easily be able to see and explain to people why it's done. And I think Greg's gone to great lengths to do an exceptional plan 
of, of that. I, I hear what you're saying is we could put this somewhere else. There's a lot of acreage. It could be somewhere in the back, but putting it right next to where people are going to come in and park and be able to understand what that's about. So you're seeing that as an educational component? It could be part of it. It could be part of it. And I just I want to make sure that we understand that in negotiating with the Crosby family, um, the consideration for selling this piece and the price and all that stuff was reflective of us having a separate easement, that we are going to have increased traffic coming into that property. Um, there'll be other programs and to respect their privacy, um, to not continue to use that road um, when I'm out of traffic. So I, I think in, <laughs> in all fairness to everything, that, and, and they've just been phenomenal in, in being uh, willing to work with, with the town and to get this into the town's hands. So I, I think it's there's been a lot of things that have gone on to try to work that through. Well, Frank, are you saying that this, that, that green piece is part <coughs> of that negotiation? Think, well, the, the instead, there's really no other place to bring this. One of the things when you consider crossing a wetlands is that you don't have an alternative. Right. And, and in this case, the, the frontage that it, they're selling to the town, this is the only place that we can get that access in there. And then we have to do wetlands replication. Certainly, the commission of all people have to make sure that we do an exemplary job. I don't disagree with that. Uh, it, it's okay. a matter of where. Right. That's, that's and, and we discussed that. And, and again, it just seemed like this would be the perfect place to be able to show how that's done and how it can be done well. And. Uh, so that was sort of the part of the discussion in, in choosing that. The other good part about this is that it was probably one of the first inland pieces that Jim and I had a chance to kind of look at together. So he's had a good chance to see some of this as well. Anything else, Tony? No, that's, that's where I come from. Kevin? Can you just point out that where the road is now, they need access out the field? Sure. So right now, go back to our cover page here. Yeah. Right now, we access over this private property right. of the beach <coughs> here. Right. You know, so th this new access is shifted to the to the east, uh, 100, 100 okay. feet or so. Can I ask one more or two more things that might be considered? Because we're trying to bring this road in and we're trying to shift around trees and things like that, as long as that, that road doesn't encroach towards the wetlands anymore, that there'd be a little bit of discrepancy allowed when they're cutting, marking and cutting in that road. If there's a really nice tree or some feature that, because we, we've walked this several times, but still to actually flag it out and lay it out. If we come across a tree and we say, my gosh, by moving this thing, you know, 10 feet in a little bit or eight feet one way or the other, that we can um, Yeah, well, couldn't we just tree. condition it and say, as long as it doesn't further encroach on the wetlands, you can move it to uh, accommodate yeah. existing trees? I mean, we want to stay basically within where we are. Right. But I, I think that we want to have that option of maybe tweaking it a little bit. Um, especially if it's um, as on the side of the saving um, right. Okay. And I'm wondering if there's a possibility of creating a couple of more parking <coughs> spots. We're, we're, we're concerned that there'll be times that this place is going to have to be kept closed. We've had issues with people getting into other pieces of property and we want to be able to allow people to access this um, and, uh, but I think we're going to have to keep that gate closed at certain times. So if mm -hmm. someone wants to, and, and part of our Conway study is trying to figure out how folks can access this and, and be able to use it on a regular basis. But I was actually thinking in the corner where the P is on clap, if there's any possibility of creating two or three spots, um, yeah. yeah. I can I can certainly look into that. I mean, I don't I don't want this hearing closed tonight because I'm still awaiting the comments from Natural Heritage, um, but I can certainly take a couple more topographical shots up there if, if we can make it work grade wise. Um, 
I'm not so sure it isn't already fill that was placed there a long time ago. If you take a look, it almost looks like when they changed Clap Road or something, that they was might. The filling spot? Yeah, okay. yeah. But it just seems like that might be the, the spot for two or three cars um, to, be able to, okay. to be able to park. It, is that within the, uh, the wetlands over there? Where you're no, talking it's not. It's out. It's outside of the uh, wetland area. The wetland line is right here. Okay, so it's within the uh, fifty or the hundred. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I mean, we're, we're taking some leeway with with being in buffer zone. <coughs> but again, the, the you have to look at the benefit of, of, of the no, whole thing. What I what I was thinking of is you could. If you could have more parking places there, you could do the nice uh, scenic boardwalk through the wetlands uh, to get to the highland country um, farther back and enhance your education component of this property. We're good at that. <laughs> We're good at making crossings, right, Penny? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're very nice. good at it. So the area by the clap there is not in the wetland? Up, up here. This this is the wetland line right here. So this is all upland area. Really? You know, that you, you could use. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we couldn't it's just put a big parking lot right, right there and big. avoid the whole, not big enough. No. No. We still we still have to requ get that access. To oh, the it has to. Oh, to Appleton. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, we <coughs> do. Yes. Yeah, no, that's access. fine. No, that's good. We should have the road to our own property go through our own property. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Makes sense. It does. <laughs> I think so. I th yeah, I think there's plenty of room. I don't know So you don't want to close this tonight? No, I want to get my um, endangered species okay. certificate first. Could you could you come down right along the uh, the side of no yeah come across no no no, no up by clap other side up of here? my caddy could you come through that way no I'm on the uh, other side of my caddy wumpus uh, uh, right here yeah but, well, the other I don't, the other thing we wanted to do Tony was get as much away from the private piece as well. I mean, that, that's one of the considerations that we so that made with the part. Crosby family is that we'd move our activities sort of away from there. If that's, if that's a requirement, that's a requirement. Well, it was something that was all discussed. Um, okay. Is there anybody in the audience? Okay, so we're going to... Have a motion to continue. Well, does what Jim, Jim want to say Jim? anything? Sorry, Jim. That um, we need to, not now because we're going to continue. We need to vote for a waiver, or does all this uh, covered under a limited project because it doesn't meet the bylaw, the local bylaw, yeah. in, th in, in three different areas. But it is a, it's a it's a public purpose project, limited project. But we but we'll discuss that. We'll figure that out. But from a legal perspective, you may have to vote a waiver. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do that when we close it. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I make a motion to close. No. no. Continue. No, continue. I'm just sorry. testing everybody. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> October 22nd at um, 710. Second. Oh, I'll close now. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I don't think you should spend as much time at the uh, in Greenbush. I know. Oh, it's so nice down there. I'm going to rush to the Princeton Union. Good job. I'm um, sorry. Mullen, 73 Kane Drive. I was going to ask if Craig would make the presentation for me. You get three for three. On October 10th, 2012, at 720 p.m., Town Hall Situa Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 of Town of Situa Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Mara Mullen to repair a septic system on property located 
at 73 Kane Drive, situated at Butters and other interested parties invited to attend. My name is Phil Spath, the Spath Engineering, representing the applicant. And this is a repair of the septic system. And as we can see, we have a wetlands line back into here, 50 foot buffer zone and 100 foot buffer zone. And what we're doing is we're going roughly two feet into the uh, 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, reason is the best test bit was test bit number, number uh, three in that location. Uh, we have to take out five feet of unsuitable material to get the good stuff. In, in essence, I would like to kick it back even more, but I, I, I kept it at that location. Um, the system will consist of an IA innovative alternative system due to the uh, high modeling grade in this area. We're using a, a drip system and a uh, uh, hoop with a pump chamber. Um, and it'll be roughly six inches out of the ground. The whole idea is to keep that mound down. The, 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 the site into here has probably about a four foot mound in this location. That's why we, we placed it right within uh, the area it's located. Um, we really couldn't put it back into here because we have cars. This technically is a little parking area for any, any cars back in there and you can't put any material over a drip. Uh, to make a long story short, that's it. No <coughs> Todd? Paul? No. Tony? What, um, come on. <laughs> I know. It's not a, 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 a perfect one. It's you, Tony. It's a curiosity. <laughs> uh, Tony grilled him, too. <laughs> yeah. um, Tony's going to ask if we could put the septic off site. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what a bag. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm fine. I'm oh. fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, Anybody in the audience? Yeah. 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 I make a motion to close this one. I second that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say for the next step? <laughs> 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 nice intro, Phil, though. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, Perkins, 309 Central Ave? Oh, you don't have Board of Health, Phil? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Do. yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The next one's down. All right, got it. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, so I'll open it and we'll continue it. On October 10th, 2012, 7.30 p.m., Town Hall, Sidgwick Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing <laughs> under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Sidgwick Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Jane Perkins to repair a septic system on property located at 309 Central Ave, Humrock, Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. <laughs> I make a motion to continue Perkins 309. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so, an update on airs. Um, I can let the 28 order say I have cutting of vegetation. The, the property owners here, if they wanted to speak to it as well. But um, I, I sent out, if there was a. Um, Show cause hearing, there was a violation of clearing of wetlands, almost complete clearing of wetlands in one area. Um, uh, so I sent out a, uh, uh, an enforcement order asking them to hire a wetland specialist, delineate the wetlands, and provide uh, a mitigation plan to the commission as soon as possible. So we did get a letter. The uh, property owner who here tonight did hire um, a surveyor and a wetland specialist, and they're in the process of delineating the wetlands and coming up with a mitigation planting plan, either for the wetlands, but we know the buffer for sure, but we don't know if the clearing actually went into hydric soils as well. But we'll find that out. So I don't know if you probably notice here if he wants to add anything to it, but I think they're on track with coming in compliance and with the restoration plan. I just basically just wanted to provide an update that they're moving forward, and that's good. Okay. Are we all right with that? Yeah, there's someone in the audience. What? Yeah. Uh, Morse Engineering has been retained by the owner there. 
uh, as well as um, Brad Holmes Environmental Consulting and Restoration. We've walked the site. The homeowner has uh, tried to plant uh, just a seed mix right now over the disturbed areas. There's been a hay bale set up at the limit of work between the salt marsh and the area that was disturbed. We're in the process of uh, looking at the wetland areas and we expect we'll have a plan or some more evidence for you at the next meeting. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I do have a concern. I, I live next Your door. name is? Ben Osmoshberg. And um, your address? 26 Gardiner Road. Okay. Uh, when you look at the culvert right now, there is no water running towards the marsh. And my septic tank is right there. Obviously, all this water is uh, going down. Where it, it's going, I have no idea. I am very concerned about my septic tank and the basement. Um, because the ditch is not there anymore. Culvert, uh, everything is gone. So while you are deciding on what my neighbor is going to do, what happens to my property and my protection? Well, I think you were at the last hearing and we've instructed the property owners to, um, our concern is siltation runoff from the site <coughs> and, and uh, damage to the well and what's in the buffer zone. So we instructed the owners, the heirs, to stop all work, to make sure that they put up some siltation, and then at a, if they did anything, it would be to plant some fast-growing grass to keep any sort of runoff from occurring. When we have a plan, when they submit a plan as to what they'd like to do with that, then you can look at, I mean, we just don't know what they're, what they're going to do, and we, we don't have any other direction to give them at this time other than to stop work and to um, just control any, any runoff or anything like that. Once, once they have a plan um, to come back to restore that wetlands, at that time, if you have some input on that, or if, if you want to make your concerns to their engine, their engineers in the room tonight that they've retained, so maybe he can help you a little bit with some of that. But we really can't give them any direction. If there's a drain or something that's supposed to be dealt with, or it's been filled in, we'll have to address that at that time. Um, <coughs> right away, but that's beyond sort of where our. Um, it's just got to be put together in a plan and submitted to us. So you didn't even um, tell Mr. Ayers to open the ditch. We're not going to do that. No. the ditch. No, we're not going to do that until they... Did he fill it in? Did he it, fill the ditch in? Or was it filled in prior to that? Uh, have you been there to I've asked the D it? I've asked the DPW to go out and investigate okay. it, just to, just to see whether or not it's it's not it's non-functioning. If it's non-functioning, what's what's their proposal? I believe it's I believe they constructed it. Okay. I don't know if they have an easement, but did 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 the but did your neighbor actually fill did they fill it in or was it filled in before that? No, no, no. He filled it, it in. Everything was functioning well. You. Mm -hmm. Made the plan a few years yeah. ago. Okay. Well, I did ask the DP. I, I did ask the DPW to go out and check, check the um, that drainage that drainage system yeah. to, to see what needs to be done to have it flow properly. So we should have a we should have a response from them. So in I, the meanwhile, yeah. I just wait to get flooded or something, and then I come to you or what? Um, I, get I, a I, lawyer yeah. or? What? I thought they I thought they would have gone out by now. I asked them last week. I will ask them again tomorrow morning to go out and check it tomorrow morning to just to just to do an investigation to see what what's there. But you but you're saying your neighbor actually filled it in. It just it didn't siltate on its own. Well, I don't see any water in the beginning of the street. All the runoff that used to gush through this wetland is not there. Yeah, okay. Well, I think I think if we get a if we get a response from the DPW, we might be able to take the next step and to determine whether or not it was natural natural siltation or a combination of fill and natural, but I think we need a we need them right. to investigate it because I believe it's their structure. 
Yeah. Did I'll, we ever I'll, find out if there was a plan for that actual, because it would be beneficial to us to know what was built. We do have a plan. We did. We found it. Yeah. I, it. Yeah, so it's was it's there a ditch? Because it didn't look like, like, the way it fanned out with the gravel covered in the screen, it kind of looked like it just kept getting wider and was just flat and then just dissipated into that area. It looked like he actually put a worse ditch there to me. They uh, had originally put a ditch and put rocks in it, and then they had put a mesh over All the, the rocks, rocks even, place, yeah. and they had planted some vegetation. So everything is gone. Who, who planted that? The neighbor? Oh, the no, no, no. The plant the, the, that you found? Yes, the DPW plants. Yes. DPW. Those are DPW plants. I, that I believe right, so that Jim's, went through the commission. So let's see if we can get, so we need to see if we can get DPW to take a look and see if it's it is has been altered or yes. or whatever. Yeah. It'll be part of that. Um, I heard so from another neighbor that Mr. Ayer had said instead of the culvert, he has put a pipe that is taking the water all the way to the marsh. Well, we'll find that out too. Okay. We'll, we'll try. We'll, we'll find the original plan and have the DPW investigate. I'll go to the DPW again tomorrow morning and ask them if they will investigate the, the function. Thank you. Have you investigated at all? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll have DPW to look at it. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So we're going to let them get back to us with a plan. Will you let me know what is? How do I find out? And our, our, our letter asking to be continued tonight was to the next available time. So I think we'll be ready for the 22nd if you can accommodate us. Okay. But I'll try to get a, res I'll try to get a response from DPW yeah, yeah. before that. It's, it's really just a, um, an update on the show. Call yeah. Right? So, but, yes. so, but we can, well, more than likely it'll be on the 22nd. And you could check with Carol just prior to the meeting or something if you like. Okay? Thanks. Thank you. Um, 513 First Parish Road at additional catch basin. Mm -hmm. So is that an amendment or? Well, we well it's just it's a discussion at this point, but we do. Greg is Greg is here who can in, can address it, but it's a, it's a it's a request now, and we we did discuss it last time. I, I do have a suggestion at the 513 um, First Parish Road project. The mitigation for work um, that was within the 50-foot buffer was that they were going to repair or replace a catch basin further down on First Parish towards Route 3A. As it turns out, if you if you drive that road, you'll see that in front of 513, there's a, there's a small depression, then there's a rise, and then the catch basin that they were going to repair is on the other side. There's a flooding problem in front of 513, and that was brought to our attention by the neighbors across the street when we were hearing the proposal. So recognizing, recognizing that two things. One, the work on the catch basin further down was not going to alleviate the flooding problem at 513. In addition to that, after an investigation by the applicants, they found that it's functioning, that it really doesn't need work, and there's another culvert underneath the road attached to that. So it really was, it was inappropriate to really propose repairing or replacing that according to the engineers that looked at it. So they've come back now. Um, wanting to alleviate the flooding and continue with the mitigation, and they'd like to put a catch basin, a new catch basin, where the flooding problem actually exists, on the west, on the on the side of the property at um, at 513. So the issue now is um, DPW is going to um, close any work on roads somewhere around mid-November. They need an expeditious method. If you agree that this is a proper place for a catch basin, which I fully support, and I think it is an appropriate place, and I think it would really benefit the flooding problem, um, we need to do it expeditiously because they need to design it. Well, there is a design. They need to construct it before there's a prohibition on doing any road work, which is mid-November. So they're going to need a decision. So the only thing, and Greg, you can speak to this if you want to, but the only thing that I can think of is an amended order. But amended order is going to take too long. They won't be able to do it. They'll hit mid-November. So I'm thinking that we could um, 
possibly provide uh, um, an emergency certification to them because of the flooding problem that could be one and then come in for an amended order um, after the fact or something to that effect but if we don't allow them to do it quickly it won't so you feel out. that this change is is really beneficial I do okay. I do for what so for, for, ro for road for flooding in the road, Frank? You, yeah, you've seen it. For, for the the road in, and I'll answer you. You asked the question at the last hearing. I'll answer that in a minute. Um, but you you saw what's happening with where the <coughs> where that flooding in the road would happen is now eroding, scouring the side of First Parish Road. If they didn't take action, immediate action. Basically, Todd spotted this. If they didn't take immediate action, the road partially the road could have partially collapsed. So that so there is an immediate issue. Todd, your question at the last hearing was, shouldn't, shouldn't they be doing this as a part of the stormwater management plan? My response to that is probably, but it's already, it's an approved project and the appeal period's over. We looked at it. Um, we had our prior agent look at the stormwater management plan. Everything seemed to be in place. We approved it, signed off on it, appeal period's over. I, we may have missed that opportunity. So at this so point in time, they're offering, they're offering it as mitigation at this point in time. So before the house was built and the area was disturbed, there wasn't a flooding problem. But when they disturbed it, they created a flooding there problem. Was, you couldn't see it. Uh, you got to state your name. And mm -hmm. Just can't talk. It, we'll, get, we'll, we'll open yeah. this up in a second. So what happens is the commission has a chance to discuss it, and then it will ask the audience or other people to speak, and then state their name and position okay well the, the neighbors across the street did say that that was a discharge point of, of runoff coming down the road so that was a known discharge point for that for that road yeah but there was road like race. a wall there there was vegetation that was densely vegetated with stuff yeah. that was holding it together and I'm not I mean I understand that we missed our window but that doesn't mean that I don't get an opportunity to express my displeasure with the fact that we're getting hosed because they built into the 50 and we're getting it wasn't a problem. If it was such a big deal before, the town would have been like, hey, we need a catch basin here because they already built one down the road. Yeah. Yeah. There was a flooding problem on the road, but that was the discharge point. But there was no problem with scour of the road until they did the because project. Because there was vegetation on it. Right. So, the, so the project actually has caused some... It exacerbated some the problem. ...problems with the road itself. <coughs> with the road itself. Not necessarily flooding, but with, scour, but with scour on the side of the road. The water's still discharging. But now, because of the lack of vegetation, now it is, and so it is project. It is project related. It is project related. So we're left with the, with the suggestion on what to do at this point. They're proposing the catch basin. Is there more? So note to self. Because this was a, this is an ad, the road the road scouring is, could be considered an adverse impact from this project. I always, guess we should put more you. bushes in the buffer zone instead next time to be cynical. Sorry. Ah. It could require it now. It's, if it's an adverse impact from the project, I thought the window the, for mitigation was closed. Well, they're going to they're going to have to apply for an amended order because this is not a minor this is not a minor activity. So they're going to have to give an amended order. The only thing I'm trying to do is expedite so they can at least get the catch basin in to prevent what basically what they what right. they cost. Yeah. But so, it's, but it's existing and they need to do something now. Right. But so if, if if they want to do that, we can still request whatever we want for additional mitigation in the amended order right yeah mm -hmm. that's what yeah i think you correct okay i have to um leave here shortly and i have a piece on the conway school so i want to wrap this up real quick okay steve if i could just speak quickly on this um i was involved in the original design on this first of all for the record there is no disturbance in the 50 foot non-disturbance zone here so there was no mitigation for any work within the 50 foot. What happened was there was a proposal to put in four times the required mitigation. The commission responded and said, we would rather see you fix a catch basin where there's a flooding problem. And so plant bushes, was, I remember, so right. It was designed, so nobody was being hosed on anything, okay? What now we was, are, because what, it should be storm management. Okay, this site was designed with a full stormwater management and all the water on site is being handled. Okay, that's yeah, what's required right. no, in the stormwater No, that's true. Bylaw. I get that. What the applicant is doing is trying to correct a town problem. 
Okay, it's not a developer who did something wrong here. What it is is a developer trying to help the town. Okay, and what we found out through the process was that the actual flooding is worse closer to where the house is than where the catch basin was that was proposed to be changed. So what the applicant that purchased the property is trying to do is fix the town problem. So nobody did anything wrong here. They don't have to come and change this. It's just a better thing to do. And it's better for the town. And he's actually putting the drainage on his own property from the town street. So it's a much better situation. So please, it's no one did anything wrong. All right, I, I walked the site extensively before the building started, and there was no problem with scouring on the road. It wasn't raining. It was raining. The intermittent stream was flowing on several occasions when I was on that property. So there was definitely water. And we did go there on a rainy day because the neighbors were yelling at us about how that was a big flood, the sheet flow down the road. So I went over there when it was raining to take a look at it. I didn't see any evidence of any scouring. I, I understand that it's a benefit to the town, and I'm willing to accept that. And I just think if hindsight, we shouldn't have, we should have known that this could have occurred. We should have had a better intuitive sense of what would happen when the actual area was no longer vegetated and was disturbed. Well, and it's being revegetated now, but what, is that going to hold back the scour if it's just planted? Do we even need to put the catch base in there then? Instead of have him and go to the expense of putting that, can't we just revegetate it and will it hold the road back? He could probably put a swale in and get rid of the property. I mean, and get rid of the problem, but the catch basin is the proper way to do it because you want the sediment from the town road going into a sump for the catch basin. Instead of I mean, that's the, the proper way to handle the drainage. I mean, these guys are trying to do the right thing, so please, I mean, uh, my tone, work with them. I'm sorry that my tone seemed as though, I, I, I'm, I just feel annoyed, I guess, that we didn't know this and now we're here backpedaling, but I guess we're not. If, if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, then we aren't backpedaling. We actually are making the appropriate it's action. Better. It's an adjustment that's much better for the site and much better for the town. Okay. Yeah. I can fact, agree with that. The these guys are willing to do it is, is a true. good thing. So that's all I apologize for saying that we're getting close. I am. Thank you. That's not. That was inappropriate. It might have been an inappropriate term, but I, I don't believe there was as much road scour as we're seeing now. So I think you're. I think you are correct on that. And if the we water have the still went there though. And if we have the opportunity to take a look at that and do yeah. some additional yeah. plantings as part of this, we'll take a look and yeah. see. So we do have sort of a second pass at it yeah. in a way. And the, the only reason I said it was in the 50-foot buffer, I looked at the plans and I didn't see any construction in the 50-foot buffer. That's what the applicant consultant submitted to us in, in mitigation for work in the 50-foot, even though I didn't see it on the plan. So I'm responding to the written piece that was sent to us. That's why I said that. That's why I said that. I know on the plan you didn't show it. I think it might be a good idea. Yeah. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to get an emergency go ahead to 513 Place Parish Road for the catch basin. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Can I just do this? Um, yeah. I just want to explain real quick in, to the commission. I'll be in touch with you. Um, we I'll got a proposal from the Conway School. It went out to all the members. And I'm going to go before CPC at their next meeting asking for funding for this um, to take place. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at it? I didn't get it. Um, oh, I emailed it to you all. I emailed it to you all. I'm not saying you did, oh. but I, I, I Oh, okay. Um, I emailed it to you, especially so, you, because I knew you took such an interest. At any rate, um, it basically oh, uh, I'll, You'll get it outlines. tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll resend it. Um, yeah. But it's just, it outlines what we've discussed with the, the Conway School and, um, and what they're proposing to do. And, and I'd like to hopefully get Community Preservation Commission to agree to fund this um, at their next meeting so we can proceed. I think if there's a little bit of tweaking in what we want them to do or not do, we can, <coughs> we can talk about that. What we want to do is keep it under um, as, as low a cost as we can. And uh, and get that piece rolling. 
There, there is a, exactly what you say, there's a provision here. This is actually not the full proposal. They're going to generate a full proposal after, the, after we meet with the graduate students and after we come up with, with an issues list. Then, then they'll come up with a full proposal. So this is basically just locking in their time to prepare a full proposal based this on input from the commission. And we want them to do this in their next school calendar or yeah. whatever we want to call it. done by April. Yeah, to begin in Jan to begin in January. The only thing I'm concerned about, Frank, is um, uh, we need to sign this. I, I, the chair, either the, I, they put my name there, but I would suggest the chairman of the commission or the town administrator. But we're still not sure where the f we're not conclusive on where the funds are going to come from. Well, that's I'm bringing this to the community preservation committee at the next meeting. Yeah, and that's where we want the money to come from. Right, but we need to we need to get this back to them because they need to lock in time. Okay. For, for students. So the sooner, the, I just say the sooner the better. We'll be meeting next week, CPC. Okay. Is that sufficient, do you think? Is that I'll, I'll, e I'll email them tomorrow, just say, you know, okay. it, it, it's coming. Tell com them that we're 99% sure. Yeah. I, I don't see a problem with that. I've already sort of run this along through the chairperson and a couple of the members, and I think we're in agreement. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great for those two parcels of land they're working on. Yep. Very nice. All right. So if everybody's okay, I'm gonna. Can I come with you? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Sure. Why? Where you going? Where you? Where are you going? Oh. He's leaving. I gotta go pick somebody up at the airport. Oh, can I come with you? Oh, she's leaving. I thought you wanted to come to the CPC meeting. On explain no. that. Wait, you have a ride, or you'll get the HOV lane. It'll be faster. <laughs> That could be. Right. That's not open now. What's next? Well, the airport one is always open. Oh, that's true. Okay. Do you need my glasses? <laughs> yes, I might need them. All right, so we still. All right, so what do you have? Do you have to vote on the order of condition? Let's do, do the important oh, stuff. Oh, boy. I make a motion to. Do I have any orders of condition? Oh, the cane bride. Yeah. We haven't seen them, but they're just basic sectors, right? I make a motion to accept the. Orders of condition on 73 King Drive, Bath, Carol, would be right in. Certificate of compliance. I second the motion. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Um, and That's you, the only one. No, the other thing you need to vote on, other administrative items, signs payment of $255. Um, I believe that money needs to come out of the conservation fund. Have you got a response you, back? You were going to include in this packet what that $12,000 was. It could be used for. Uh, where it comes from, uh, what it could be used for, etc. Is it in here? No. No. I mean, that was the whole idea uh, of waiting for this meeting was to, to discuss I mean, I still don't know what the Is there anything in writing on, on, I've never seen anything in writing on where the, the where the money came from? Well, it's been there for years. <coughs> so they, they so it's a they yeah. should know yeah. in the accounting department where it came from. Yeah. Is Mary still there? No, no that's the problem. She's There's not. part of the problem. There's a question. Oh, no. Can we vote ourselves I mean, a raise? No. Probably <laughs> the probably the probably states what it was be used for I don't know but except for the chairman he'll be yeah he's, yeah, he's, he leaves early and gets here late. okay okay many many years ago okay yeah are, are we is this do we, we don't know whether this money can be used for future signs or we don't know anything about it Brian, no. I, correct no correct it could correct. be used for anything to do with conservation say if we it was it was supposed to be to buy property for instance but you can't buy property with $12,000. Right. I, 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 I know that we've well, uh, recorded so. orders, I mean not orders. I suggest we recorded deeds. We vote to take the 255 from there and if we're not allowed to they're not going to write the check. Just vote, vote if appropriate. Yes. Because I don't because I don't know where I don't know where the money came from. If we're not supposed to use it for that, then they're not going to make the check out. No, I, I so, no, I understand what you're saying, Tom. But let's make a motion. I think this need needs to be paid. I talked to Meg. She asked me the same question. I said it's been around a long time. I 
believe that in the past we've recorded deeds that people have given us land, and we've taken that money to record the deeds at the registry. Other than that, I don't know what we've used it for. We, I think we actually paid somebody's back taxes to get a piece of property. Jesus. I mean, it was $50. You, know? you want to pay I my know. taxes? It wasn't much. It wasn't much. Yeah. But I, I just remember one time when I was on waterways, uh, being able to talk to Mary, and she could she gave on a me sheets and yeah. the history and uh, the history of the history's not here. Yeah, we got none of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I make a motion that we ask Mary or ask them to cut cut a check from that fund for two hundred fifty five dollars for the signs, whoever that's supposed to go to. Yeah, that's. Uh, Okay, somebody want to second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There's three other things you need to, three other need, three important things you need to consider before you before you leave. Forget all the forget the agents report stuff. There's there's several there's several things. One is um, uh, 159 Summer Street, asking for a certificate of compliance. Um, right. There was a requ there's a request by the applicant to um, this. Four, I believe it's fourteen hundred dollars that they have provided to the commission for you know, um, to ensure that the mitigation got done. Um, they're requesting to not do the mitigation and to use that money for off-site mitigation. Uh, I went to the site, um, I and I reviewed the wetland restoration the, the, the restoration plan um, that was submitted with the proposal that they agreed to do, and I think it's I think it's an incredibly very good, well-designed mitigation project that I think should should be carried out. So, I don't so why know. hasn't it been done? Well, but, but we'll discuss it first, and then the applicant, the, the owner, and the engineers here. But um, I, when I looked at it, I thought it was, I thought it was a very good site, and I think it should be. I don't know if you had a chance to get out there and take a look at it, but you need to decide whether or not you're going to issue the certificate of compliance or hold them to the mitigation, or or use the money for off-site mitigation. Hey, I, I personally wonder, and um, I, I've walked the site, why anything has to be done. It looks, uh, all you're going to do is take down some beech trees that are, um, which we really some uh, There's some big trees in there. You know, when you mentioned replication area, there are two replication areas. There's the original one, and then once they started building, the botanist came in and had the order conditions amended. I wasn't part of that. We did the original work for the uh, developer. We, we got an order conditions to build the house, the septic system, and the driveway. There, there's a wetland crossing from the driveway. And so the, the wetland replication was the mitigation for the crossing of the wetland for the driveway. But that, when you say replication, you're talking about the amended one? Yes. Okay. The amended one is the most, is the the most recent one. one. Okay. There's a small mill just to the uh, north of that to where it was originally proposed. There was like a little uh, peninsula. It's probably gravel and it's fairly high. And then the amended one was to pull it back closer to the house. The problem is when you drive into the site, there's the driveway and right to the left of the driveway are all the woods. There's some very large trees in there. There's some nice uh, um, silver beach in there. Those trees have been growing for probably 15 years. They were there from day one. There, there is an existing well. The house is on um, its own well. That's right in the middle of the proposed mitigation area. To go in there and do the um, restoration or the, uh, I mean, the uh, replication would require taking down those large trees. You've got to get an excavator in there and pull the big stumps out, and then you have to lower the. You would have to bring some trailers in there to excavate the soil out and bring it down to a foot or two below the. Um, elevation of the existing wetland and then you bring in the hydric soils and you put your plants back. In my opinion, I think you do a lot more harm doing this replication given what's out there at the present time. Um, <coughs> it's going to open up the yard area where there is no yard area now. I mean, the, the, the stumps have to come out and to get access from the edge of the driveway to the wetland area, you've got to open up a good size area there to bring the equipment in there. Um, you know, the commission has allowed off-site uh, mitigation in the past. I, I think it would make far more sense to do that because I think from an environmental point of view, leaving all those trees here and the canopies and the quality of the trees is much better. I just had a thought. What about 
native species every four feet on the front lawn around instead like because in the front there's when you come in the driveway there's that little turnaround thing like the driveway has like a little part where you could back into it to turn out and go out opposite the garage you mean uh so in the driveway you're looking in the driveway the garages are under the house i think mm -hmm. and then the front lawn is all up here yeah. what about a row of bushes all the way along the front lawn in between the the woods because i mean the house is literally sitting in the woods it, the only open spot is the driveway and then that front lawn i mean could we plant high, the blueberry bushes or native right. species because <coughs> if I, we go I mean, off-site, what are we going to do off-site then? Where are we going and what are we doing off-site? We, we now have a fund of $12,500. Right. We put it in there until we know what to do it for, and then we can use it. Okay. I mean, that's what I would do. I, hmm. I mean, having gone out there, I think it's a fabulous piece of property the way it is. I agree. I would hate to see any mitigation where I thought the mitigation was going to go. Uh, because all you can do is tear you have to destroy trees. it in order to yeah. build do it, it where it's already disturbed <laughs> in the lawn area so you end up with some less lawn and more bushes yeah. I, I mean as far as I'm concerned that would be the left side of the driveway? Well, on the right side of the driveway where that turnaround is the front lawn is yeah. all in if you're coming down the driveway oh okay yeah. the lawns on the right and like, I'm you, saying all like get rid of some of the lawn and plant a row of bushes up in there right or the money, I just want to know where the, how we get the money then. Do we yeah. have we that much have say? Money. I know, but oh, we have the money? The money? Yeah. Yes, Is do. it in the $12,000 fund? The, no, uh, the order no, conditions. So we just have it. The order conditions were very clear. Before they could start work, the homeowner had to give the contractor a check made out to the town of Situate before they could start the yeah, work. So, <coughs> so we, the conservation doesn't you actually have, have money. that money. You do have the town right? has the, the town has a we the don't. town we don't so that means we don't have any say over yeah. what happens. So there's a guaranteed deposit account that we use to pay for things. Like that's what we get money. If we need an outside consultant, we get money. It goes into a guaranteed deposit account. So if the bushes were planted, we'd have to take the money out and pay for yeah. the bushes. Right. Oh. Like we just did that. No, that lady. I, no. <coughs> The yeah, right. Oh, the it's a deposit. Cost more than twelve hundred dollars. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. A lot more. Uh, yeah. A lot more. Wow. Yeah. All right. But so the order conditions were clear, and it's in the letter I sent you. It said that he had to give the commission the money, is a, a down payment for the replication area before they could start their work. All right. So then, if we're not going to do the replication area, we need to know how much the replication area was going to cost, so that way we'd be able to make that the same. Right? I mean, doesn't that make sense that we would know what it would cost so that way we're you're, getting what you said you were going to do? Mitigation you're talking about, I think it was, 16, was it 1600 or 1400? You know what that was? I, I've got it in the letter. I don't have the letter with me. Is it either 1400 sure. or 1600? It's 1400. That was the deposit yeah. or that was the mitigation? I'm, I'm not sure. But the, but the work you're talking about, I know you could do that because I've worked with Brad in the past and there's and the plants you're talking about, I mean, if you did put them along the driveway, you know, the, the labor and everything, it's probably a thousand bucks. But if you were but, you just know, talking I, removing trees, I know it's 500 a tree to cut trees down. Yeah, I don't know about well, I'm saying going if, back in there. I, I, no, I really don't know that that's a good idea. That, no, 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 she wants to know how much it would cost. cost. Right, I can tell you right now that it's 500 a tree to get a tree cutter. Yeah. So yeah. you look, look more than Even 1,400 dollars. Yeah. Todd, if you want, you can just get the plan and see. You can get an estimate of what the it, plan. What it what is, it yeah. Cost to, to do. I, I mean, we're a board here, so we have to we have to decide together. I mean, if I knew that if you gave us the money in kind for whatever it was going to cost to do that replication, and then it went into the conservation fund, and we had carte blanche over how we spent that money I mean not for a party or anything but like for something useful towards a you know benefiting a resource area yeah the no. bank account we have the money no we so don't have we only have a deposit we only, we only have, have a part no you got, you got the letter here no it can't possibly be but, if you're talking about so what, what, what was in the letter? Paul? Hmm? What was in the letter? I know we have 1400 The order conditions in there with that condition, it tells you exactly what that order was for. You got the final tree. Sure you can, that. 
Oh, excuse me. It is five hundred dollars per tree to get it cut. But he's saying it's in the woods. Oh, the, in the air would be more. Possibly. How how do you think it is? You're saying we have the same we have on How big is it? I know, but I would sure. We have we have how much it was going to cost. What do you think? Are you arguing with me? Are you saying, saying that I'm too low? I think, I, I, think, I think you're, I think you're uh, exaggerating. A lot of the trees are about like that. There you are, said some there nice are big a trees. Big ones, but for $500, you're taking them down so they're not going to disturb anything. Um, when you're doing this kind of mitigation, you're just going to fell <coughs> the, the trees and cart them off. Uh, it's a different. It's a different situation. I think, like, when you say big trees, I'm thinking, you know, like this is the trunk. Most of them are small. There are a couple of big ones, if I remember correctly. Well, I, the ones like that, I'm telling you now, are 500 a tree. I I just paid for it, Tony. Uh, uh, at, your, yeah, yeah. at your house, I know that. That's a different situation than at his house. They're yeah. they're saying that going in there is going to cause a disturbance, <laughs> not equal to the actual benefit of going in and doing it is that your opinion do you think that's i'm not the wetland specialist i do right. i do know that john richardson who wrote that is, is a is a well highly respected highly wetland respected. specialist who's no longer with us he wrote the plan it was accepted they said okay let us build the house we'll do the replication they didn't do the replication now they want to leave uh -huh. so, I mean, would this be easier to do the replication because that's what was was well, in the orders? I agree. There'll be a. I agree. There'll be a, a big disturbance. Yes. But what, the reason why I thought it was a good idea was just the design of it, where you've got one finger of land surrounded by wetlands, basically just connecting that and making an upland knoll for wildlife habitat. That looks like a tremendously successful wildlife habitat area surrounded by wetlands where you've got an upland knoll. But I agree there will be a disturbance. I think most of the trees were relatively small. The ones that I saw were four to six inches in diameter mostly for the most part. And there's, there's a couple of several large ones, but for the most part, they're now, they're small. Yeah. Well, then it's All right, so I just I think that the replication needs to be done. That's, oh. that's my right. opinion. Todd, yeah. can I make a suggestion? He's, he, um, the owner has a buyer for the house. They've been trying to close for almost two months now, and this is the only outstanding issue. There was a certificate of compliance issued for the septic system upgrade that had to be replaced. I think he did that. A month ago, Greg Morris did that. Um, no one knew about this until the attorney, his attorney, did a title search and he found that there was no certificate of compliance. Um, he also found that there's an order conditions plus the amended order. I did the original order, but someone else did the amended order. I don't remember who it was. But in the letter that I submitted to you that you have, I did put in there the copy of both order conditions and it, and it tells you what the money was for. Uh, believe me, when I tell you, if you go in there um, and you take all those trees down, the equipment you have to bring in to do the work, you're going to make a mess of that place. From an environmental point of view, I don't think you'll have the same amount of benefit that you would have if you left it in its current state. What, what, what I'm suggesting is um, take take the money you have, the applicant's willing to add to that, and do some offsetting. <coughs> it's going to provide a lot more benefit for the town. I, I don't know if that money could be used on the prior project was in here. I don't know if you have other projects that you're looking to do, but I think that money would be much better well spent from an environmental point of view. If you, you know, if you did, well, uh, you know, if you put it toward a project figure, somewhere that's else. That's our problem right now, tonight, is we, we don't have a figure of what it would have cost right. to have done the proper. So I don't know what you want to do. So, so if you want to, if you want to close it, just in a, if you don't think the replication is worthwhile, it, it's not not a question of whether or not it's worthwhile. What the question can be is, at the time these orders were given, how how many years ago? 1996. Oh goodness gracious! Shame on you. You should have you should have done it back then. But yeah. since 1996 to 2012, how many years has passed? Where at that point point in time, the replication probably would not have disturbed anything. Now we're into a situation where we're 12, we're what 16, 18 years later. Yeah, these trees have grown, so now we would have to rep, you know, take stuff out. So I, um, 
But uh, you should have done it. I, I, I don't understand you people. We have 1,400. Just for the just really work. to double it and we'll use Yeah, it. all right, then that's fine. If we don't have a figure. We'd have to delay it to get a proposal to get an idea of how much it would have cost. So if you just come up with a figure, if the applicant's willing to, to do that, we'll use it somewhere else and sign the certificate. I, mean, I don't know if that's acceptable, but if you want to end it tonight, what, what I'm hearing is, is we, what would the replication have cost? Right. For us to do yes. that, we're going to, have to, we're going to have to continue this to the next hearing. If you want to close it tonight, come up with a figure, we'll use it in, a rep, in, a, in some other type of environmental mitigation project. That's if you want to close it tonight. If we come up with a figure of what it would have cost back in 96? No. No, because no, no. it's not done. Yeah. If we say you do, do it, it, right? How much is it going to cost? I, I mean, okay. you're going to pay a price for not yeah. doing it when you should have done it. Are you looking to have it done on the site? I mean, do you, do I, I don't know if all the members have seen the site, but is that what you want? Do you want all the trees to come down? No, you, know, so you, no. you, misunder you misunderstand. What, what they're asking is what would it cost if you did it? Okay, if we did it today, yeah, what let's would say it cost? $10,000. Then what they're saying is, fine, right. commit to the $10,000. I'm not saying we're going to vote that way, but if, you, if that's the case, mm -hmm. then we'll consider your idea of offset oh, mitigation. Sorry. Okay. You think, you think it would cost $10,000? Actually, to do that job, it probably would. It depends on how they do it. Yeah, you're mapping the area, grading. you got to bring an excavator in there. It's got to be a big one to pull out some of the bigger stumps. It's got to be a big job. It's got to go to a sanitary landfill. Stumps are hazardous waste. Well, I don't feel and then sorry. you have to plant it and monitor it to, and maintain that they, that it grows. Yeah, so you're, you're not yeah. just wiping your hands when I you're done with it. I make a motion to it. I'm going to make a motion for an additional ten thousand dollars to be given for the mitigation. Could we have someone in the audience before we do the motion. Someone, there's we have someone in the should audience. Ask should we ask people in the audience? I think yeah. we, we do. He had his okay. hand up. Okay. I'm sorry. Quickly. I, I just want to make one comment. We just did a replication area down at Holland Street, which was actually two lots wide. That whole buffer zone area. We took down trees. We cleared the whole site to do it. We brought in the machinery to do it. Um, loaned everything, put in 90 uh, shrubs and a certain number of trees in there, considerable amount of trees, it was $6,800 to do it. So it just, it shouldn't be that much more to do this site. I think it's actually less mitigation on this site. I actually originally designed this with John Richardson back in 96. So All right, so 7500 <laughs> No. How about oh, if we gave you the totally this whole catch basin thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a real number. How about if we <laughs> gave you, the, right. if we gave you an additional five thousand plus the money yeah. and interest that's in your account? That's probably seven thousand bucks. I'm assuming it collects interest over. No, yeah, but that doesn't count it doesn't? because okay. it should. It wouldn't have collected the interest if the job was done back when it was you supposed know what? to be it's done. It's getting late. Let's decide. All right. So I say, I, say I make a motion for seventy-five hundred dollars for the mitigation that was not done. Is that okay with you? Less the money. No. 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 Choice. no. no. Additional. I have any choice. Huh? I have any choice. I don't have any choice. It, well, it's total? been voted against it. Total. <coughs> total. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Was somebody second it? What, what do you say? I would say 7,500 total. Yeah. Including yeah. So the 1,400. I'm, I'm all right with that. I really don't care. I do. But I say... Someone make a motion to so it would be seventy five hundred minus the fourteen hundred. Minus fourteen hundred. So that's so sixty one hundred. Okay. An additional six thousand one hundred dollars. So um, can I make a suggestion that you vote that? You sign the certificate of compliance, and when it comes in with a check, you release the certificate of compliance form. Yeah, when the check is put in the bank. Mm -hmm. No rubber checks. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'll probably come from an attorney's office. They don't write Sorry, rubber I checks. Know. All right. So let's, someone let's make take a vote. Oh, we do. I made a vote. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we have we have one more. We, we don't have to we don't have to do this. We can pull, we can pull go. Let me let me do the important things first. Well, that's a quick one. All right, go ahead. Okay. Well, what I'm I'm, I'm passing photographs here right now. This is another this is another certificate of compliance. Um, Which one? For uh, 134 Humrock Beach Road, Mr. Massey. Oh, Massey. Mr. Ma Mr. Massey. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a he, this a, a this is a new pile supported house, be beautifully built. It will survive a storm, meets all compliance. And it, he went way overboard with the house. It's a very, oh, yeah, very well did. designed house. Oh, he, you know, <laughs> in the lawsuits too. There were a lot of there was a lot of opposition from the homeowners because of the size of the house. But I have to say, from a storm damage prevention standpoint, it's very well. Oh, he's well five built. feet above the friggin' wall. Yeah. Well, yeah I don't, I don't now, the, now, the, now the issue yeah, with the, the issue I with the certificate. I've, I've walked in the house. I've been in the house. Wow. <laughs> All right. The Everybody issue with the certificate. Hush up. Jim's speaking. Okay. The certificate of compliance request is before you. Um, in the order of conditions, what I circled there is called the catwalk. The catwalk was supposed to have been removable seasonally. It is removable. It's not going to be removed. It's built like the house. And, and I did get a, I did, I, I have a letter here, a description of how it was built from the homeowner, and he wanted me to read that to you. It's two, it's two by twelves. It's got cast, it's got um, uh, galvanized, galvanized caps on oh, top of the pile. Proof. There's like, there's like six commercial grade piles Absolutely. under that, under that catwalk. It's built like the house. It's really not going anywhere. Nope. So he wants, he wants you to forego the condition of the seasonal removable catwalk, and and issue the certificate of compliance with the permanent, extremely strongly built catwalk. I, I, I have one question. Is it bolted to the wall? No. All right. Yeah, it's bolted to the wall. His only problem will be when, when we get rocks thrown up there, it's still going to get damaged. Good. That's his problem. That's though, right. Good. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, and the other thing is you lose ac access, like everybody there has one of those because now if you're in the house in the winter, you can't even get out of there. That's right. If you take that away, you can't right. get to the beach. Right. I mean, as long as it's not a hazard, that thing's bulletproof. It, it is. It is. And there are other and there are other patios and everything else. You know, right. Like Everybody has access. Oh, uh, most of them are like that. The, the ones that are seasonal, they actually take some of their boards out. But yeah, yes, 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 on the on the decks, and that, that that I think is a very good design on, on the decks themselves. But those are the ones that are generally flush with the wall. Yeah. Do it themselves. Yeah. Now, now listen, listen. There's one, there's one more, there's one more issue with this here. If you look at the framing in the picture, the framing, he wants to put skirts around the entire house. That's not in the plan either. But if you look at the, if you look at that, you can see he's not trying to hide anything. There's actually framework in there for the skirts. That's not in the plan. That's not that wasn't on the plan. It's not even proposed when I went out there he said I'm going to put skirts around the house so he wants to make sure that it's okay to put skirts around the house as well these are mesh skirts right these will be just these slats. will be just be wooden, yeah, wooden just wooden just wooden yeah. slats yeah. now the only thing with that is um, if it were a barrier beach that was a sandy barrier beach on a dune I would recommend not approving it because the, the com rocks. compliance with the performance stands wants to sand the sand dunes to move around this has a seawall in front of it pretty much all cobble so in terms of impinging on the function of the resource, I don't think it will. The only thing that will happen is, Richard, what you just brought up, during a storm, those slats, some of those slats will probably be destroyed and will fly somewhere else. That, so, that's, so that's really the only issue. What about the cobble going under his house? I mean, shouldn't it, like everybody else's house has the cobble go under it? I mean, he's going to stop the cobble from going under his house. It'll hit the, yeah, it'll hit the... It'll hit no, the it won't really, because it kind of hits the wall and splashes over. And right. Most of the houses, we don't allow anybody else to do this. And so, for, so in terms of the resource area, I don't think I don't think the slats are going to impinge on on the function. Should the right. cobble should the cobble continue to move? Yes, but it's so densely developed that I I would question about the impinging on the function of the resource. I just don't think it would. Well, right. So, all right. But the slats are not on the not on the plan. They're not proposed. DEP is going out this week to do a compliance check too because it was appealed. So we approved the commission approved it under the local bylaw. Um, it was appealed. DEP stepped in, approved it. They're going to do, to do a compliance check too. So they're going to have to deal with this slat thing as well. I'd be curious to see what they say. It's interesting. There's the exact same house down the other end of the beach, mm -hmm. the Kendall's house. Mm -hmm. It's exact mirror. They get the ramp and then they get the slats. Slats have never been broken. The ramp's never been broken and isn't nearly as rugged as this. 
Yeah. And it's the same seawall drops down behind it. Yeah. It's like a mirror. It's a little wider. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know. You yeah, but, yeah, but the house construction there. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay, so anyway, this, there's a certificate of compliance going to be laid out before you. Right. You have a choice to sign it or not. Okay. If there's a majority that signs it, it goes through. Last, last, <coughs> issue. Have the last issue. The others we can fold over. What about the emergency order on Cornelius That just came before us today. Thank you. Yeah. There's an emergency. Yeah, there's a re um, one of the wells. Is, one of the town's water wells is closed down off of Cornet Stetson. Um, well, it actually involves two wells, number ten and number eleven. Um, it's closed down because of um, fecal coliform bacteria problems. So they want to put another pipe on the embankment on the side of the dirt road that brings you out to the. Um, to the wells. So they're not doing work in the wetland. They're going to do it on the embankment on the side of the dirt road that goes to the wells. What they need to do is they need to put a, um, a, a pipe, a circular pipe, to allow the groundwater to have more contact time with the chlorine to kill the bacteria before it goes into the system. And they need to do that right away because the wells are closed down. So they, they're going to put erosion controls in, but they want to do it as soon as they get a bid. They're going to put out for bid but they'd like to do it as early as next week, as soon as they get the bid in, because they don't want the well, two wells to be closed down for any length of period of time. So they're requesting an emergency certification. What, what's the side of that? The, what is it, oh, the office Cornet Stetson? It's right, 80, right across, yeah. 83, I think it is. Everything blooming. Home in place. Or every blooming There's place. a well right oh, there. Oh, really? Oh. Across the street, yeah, just before you get to it. On the left hand side. Yeah, by the Christmas the blueberry, the blueberry farm and the Christmas yeah. tree farm. Yeah, the blooming place. Yeah. yeah. It's right by that house that uh, that we had to yeah. get yeah. them to change the. Uh, the no. <coughs> oh, and this is the blooming place here. Yeah, across the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On the side of the embankment along the road, they need to put in a certain pipe. Yeah. Just basically to allow more contact back to the corridor. <coughs> <coughs> suggest they need to. Exactly that. No. Yeah. That is, and that makes perfect. I don't know So, I'd, so I'd like to have the, uh, you know, I'd like to have the. Um, well, I can, I can do it on my own initiative, but you've got to ratify the emergency certification. But I could write that up tomorrow and get it to them. What are you going to call, call us and sign it? I mean. Or, or you just want, want us to say okay tonight? If you just say okay, it's yeah. I can write it. Okay. It's ratified. Okay. <laughs> the vote. All right. Last, last, I think it's the last important issue, unless Penny, you see something else. Like this. The others are just updates yeah. on a variety of different things. But yeah. this is uh, where we didn't have to issue an enforcement order. And I brought this up in the last hearing, but it didn't, it didn't get very far. This is on Inner, if you want to take a look at that, pass it down. It's on Inner Harbor Road on Beach. Oh. Uh, uh, the Mr. Mazzola. Mr. Mazzola. Yes. But now take, but take, but I'll take a look at the pictures. Yeah. Because I think it's, I think it's a relatively minor issue to be honest with you. The issue, the issue was this, um, and I, I wasn't here for the, for the two year ago episode, but he, um, there was an artificial dune built by three property owners there. One property owner, Mrs. Gibbs, paid the lion's share of building the artificial dune, but it's built on town property, so their properties only go basically to the upper beach. So there was an artificial dune built in front of four properties. Um, Mr. Mazzola decided not to, he <coughs> not to participate financially in building the dune. He elevated his house on open piles. So he's pretty safe. So he didn't, he didn't do it. So, but the order that, you, that the commission approved gave exclusive access over the dune to the beach to the three property owners that built the dune on town property and nobody else. So Mr. Mazzola and his, and his parents, who are elderly, are sitting on their decks looking at the beach and they can't get to it. They were told they have to walk all the way around to the access, the regular concrete walkway over there. So this is the situation. So and initially he was not allowed to build anything, any access way over the dune. So two years ago he basically walked over the dune, broke the fence down, the commission brought up the court, um, and the court suit was basically dropped. And there was no conclusion after that. Um, now, he, now the snow fence was, was put on the seaward side of the dune again. A new snow fence was put on the seaward side of the dune. A um, couple of years passed, and now the Gibbs noticed that he, again, is walking over the dune. 
They claimed that he, that he destroyed the fence. They showed pictures where he did roll the fence up. But if you go there now and you look at that picture, the fence in front of everybody's property there is destroyed. Yeah. So, and if you, look at, if you look closely at the foot access, and if you look at foot access over a dune anywhere, it's a very, very minor impact. I mean, if we brought people in for an enforcement order for walking over a dune, we're going to be pretty busy. What I'd like to, what I suggest is, um, and we're, 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 uh, the, uh, Mrs. Gibbs has retained an attorney who's, um, who's threatening a legal suit against the town if we don't take an enforcement action against Mr. Mazzola for walking over the dune to get access to the beach. And it's a town-owned property. So they're threatening a lawsuit. What I would suggest is that I contact Mr. Mazzola, and you can see that it's a very, very small little notch that he created just from walking over the dune. What I would suggest is that I contact him, ask him to, if we want to alleviate it, ask him to fill that in and, and come in with some type of walkway over the dune. It could be a very simple rollout mat, could be an at-grade boardwalk, uh, nothing elaborate, something very, very minor, um, removable um, in the winter season. That could be a compromise, I think, because I, I just don't see, the ma I don't see a major impact here. What, what they're claiming happened before two years ago was because of the little gully that was formed um, from, him, from them going over the dune, a storm hit. They're claiming that because of that, it destroyed the entire dune, clogged the Inner Harbor Road to a point where there was no access to it, but they were blaming it on that one footpath. But how are they allowed Israel. to have footpaths over, the, over dune, the dune? Dune. The commission signed an order of conditions. No, no, but why don't their footpaths destroy the they dune? Have, they, have, they, they, have wooden, yes. they have wooden walkways. Uh, okay. If you look at the picture, okay. yeah, each, each, I got one you. Of, each one of them have wooden, they have wooden walkways. Okay. But in the order that you signed two years ago, it says there's a prohibition on anybody else having access across the dune unless, yeah. unless, unless they come before the commission on their own initiative, which they okay. didn't do. That was their only folly. So I'd like to suggest that we get them to come in yeah. with an application to build right. something rather than walking and destroying the vegetation. Yeah, because I didn't remember that condition. I, I have a problem with us picking and choosing who can who can go to the beach from their property. <laughs> yeah. You two can go, no you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's in the, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a five page, it's a couple of page management plan that accompanied the notice of intent but the commission approved it. But they, the order does allow us to, uh, to add another person if they come in. And the, on their own initiative, yes. It's a different order. Yes. It would become a totally different right. order. Or he could come in with well, an RDA, right, and say he wants to make a little walkway, a little, little wooden yeah, mat. A little rollout mat or a back grade right. wooden walkway or something. Yeah. Just the rollout mat. Right. Yeah. yeah, they're very easy to come by. Season, seasonal, pull it out. Yeah. So, uh, but he, the neighbors built the dune in front of his house? Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's on town, it's town property. Town they property. built it on the beach. But they dune. built it in front of his house. Now, there's, there's another side to the equation Could as well. He, oh, he, wow. Mr. Mazzola sent a letter asking us to check compliance with the order of conditions that was issued to the other three property owners, and it's not in compliance. The dune was supposed to be at a consistent elevation. If you look at that picture, right. it's two feet higher in Mr. Mazzola's property. They can't even hardly see the beach. It was still two feet higher there, and then drops down in front of the other properties. <laughs> right. And oh, no, it, you got they, bad blood going uh, yeah, there. Because yeah, because well, they paid for his benefit. He's benefiting from their, they paid for him to have the dune, which he benefits from. But he didn't want the dune. He has so a then he should get the dune out of his house and spread that evenly across theirs and leave it open in front of his house even though that would... He's on a very well-built, pile-supported, open, open pile-supported house. Yeah. yeah. So if wow. the dune, so if dune, if, so if the dune <laughs> is destroyed during a storm, it's going to go onto his house. But, it, then, but then it gets on Inner Harbor Road, and it, and it prevents access to the road. Yeah. As part of the, part of the <coughs> order conditions, the, the Gibbses have the right to go in with the front-end loader to clear the road yeah. in, 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 helping the in, in helping the town rather than the town coming in. They said, we'll do that. We'll bulldoze that. But that sand that bulldozed from the road is supposed to be put back up onto the frontal dune. Oh, they didn't bring the sand in and build it. Oh, they, they did. They did. They did. Oh. They, did they, they did initially. It. But every time they had a storm, it, over, it overwatched on it and stuff. It, over, it overwatched. So we should just stay out of this until they sue us. If they sue us, then we'll have to take a position. But until then, we should just. No, but if he comes to us with if an RDA, comes, and that's part of the order, then we to have to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then I think no, that then I think that would alleviate this particular situation. Right. Right. But I'm saying instead of the enforcement order, talk to the son. Yeah. The son is. Well, Stephen can tell you that the old man is. But well, we shouldn't issue an enforcement order. We should stay out of it, yeah, and, and 
But that's what and I'm asking. If we are that's what I'm asking in, the commission. We, yes. we, we're requesting. We were requested by the app with, by Mrs. Gibbs' attorney to issue an enforcement order, or they will take action against the town. I wanted to bring it to your attention. Right. To, 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 to direct you. We can take action that their doom doesn't comply with the plan. Well, it, well, there's more to it, too. Yeah. Right. It, and then there was supposed to be a small parking area. Inner Harbor Road is here. The houses are here. They, 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 in the order, they have a right to excavate a little bit of the overwash sand to create a small, small, narrow parking area. If you go there, you'll see the sand pile for their small parking areas six to seven feet high. Right. That sand should have been brought up and put into the frontal dune. So they're not necessarily in compliance. And Mr. Mazzola pointed that out in, in a letter to us a couple of months ago yeah. as well. So anyway, I just we were asked to do an enforcement order. I wanted to I wanted to get your recommendation of whether or not we should issue an enforcement order, or possibly encourage Mr. Mazzola to come in for on his own initiative right. for an after grade board. I don't encourage. think we should encourage him to do that. He needs to figure it out for himself. And. I, I don't think we should get involved. I think we should, until it comes to us on the hot plate, then we should just Well, if they the sue law. the town, you're involved. I believe that, I believe that was right. Frank's well, opinion, too. Uh, if he comes so in with an RDA, avoid... there's no longer any issue. Oh, it's I see. So legal. we could avoid the lawsuit because it yes. would be legal. Yes. All right, all right. Yeah. 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 And if, so and if, and take away why we suggest. Yeah. Wow. So, so, if, so if, in fact, two years ago, that little notch was responsible for destroying the entire dune, we can forego that potential problem in the future by having what they, even minor, 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 more minor, an accurate boardwalk. But I'm not, you're right, Todd, Todd I'm not sure we should contact him, but I, I think it's a way to, to alleviate this particular situation. Mm -hmm. It's great because they well, actually did the right thing. They first. built a dune and not a seawall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, they could, they would not have been allowed to do that. Yeah. So, All right. What's so no next? enforcement order. No enforcement order. And, and if he, he can <coughs> let see him us on, on TV, he may hear that he could do the RDA. In, so, so let him come in on his own initiative, not contact him. I'm a little I'm a little concerned about contacting because he'll file this. But yeah. But it's a way to it's I think it's a way to alleviate number one the request for an enforcement order, and number two, avoid somebody taking action against the town, which, to be honest with you, I think is a pretty minor issue mm -hmm. in terms of somebody. Yeah, walking this is over like individual. No, this is the Hatfields and McCoys now. Yeah. This whole. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I just, I just needed, because we were requested to well, do the enforcement order. I wanted to, I wanted to clarify that. So, anything? It, it, and out of, out of all the issues, you see anything you want me to talk about? Otherwise, we can. End is it going to save us time at the next meeting? Or? We do. Forty Seven Olive Street. Are they going to put the offense up? Uh, yes. Um, they, they going? hired John Zimmer, John Zimmer went in. Yeah. Flag the wetlands, yeah. and it appears as if where the mowing is not in the fifty-foot buffer. The 50-foot buffer is pretty much at the edge of the Fragmite. Is that, it, that's interesting. I know. And well, John, that's and John did soil, he did soil tests as well. He didn't just do vegetation because it's all frag. Okay. He did soil tests as well. Oh, okay. So were they going to put a fence up? Yes. Okay. There's a small and then little that, that should be done. Yes. There's a small no fence up there now, but they put, they, need, they need to put a longer fence in. Yeah. So that, yeah. so that should. That should alleviate that. Um, I, I didn't get around to writing a thank you letter to the associate members yet. That's something I need to do. And I want. I think the, com you know, I'll, I'll write something, send you a draft, and have the commissioners. Just send it. Um, during, in, in terms of the Appleton Field, uh, the request for, for money for the eradication of the invasive species with vinegar. Yeah. Um, I did not find. I reread the. I reread the. Um, the, the contract. The license. And I didn't find anything in there that says there, any specific language that said they're responsible for the cost. What I did find is, is if there's a cost for somebody getting hurt on the property or a suit or something, that, that the town is indemnified, that they don't have to, they won't get involved in that. That was the only place I saw anything related to no, the No, it didn't say anything, but it didn't say that the town was. You know what? If he wasn't farming that, for okay. all we know, the invasive species wouldn't even be there. I don't feel that is our responsibility. Okay. I, was just, I would he bring it back because I, because I didn't find anything. In, because I was given direction to read the the, the, the I know, the I know. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't find anything that said they're completely responsible. But I heard you your, your said. But why would we be responsible? We're leasing something, a license, for one dollar a year using, he's got eight acres out there. And for all we know, the invasive species is his fault. I don't know where it came from. Make a motion yeah. to continue. Oh no! Just <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. tell, tell him we're not going to pay it. And it's it's right. it's it's massive. I mean, it's just. But he, he but he did take care of it. But you're, you're right. All I, all I, I was just asked to reread the lease, see if there was anything yeah. that said they're 
they're, but they're, it does. Specifically, they're responsible. But it also constantly throughout that lo license says that he should be enhancing the property. Right. <coughs> he has, yeah, right. and he did. Get, he did. Get, he did get USDA to give him a, a management plan. You know what? So he is, that's so I think fine. He did that. But you know, <coughs> okay. once you pay for one vinegar thing, we're going to be paying okay. for others, yeah. and I just that's don't think right. that's right. Okay, so it's going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just tell but him. I, just I just read the lease, and it doesn't have anything that says they're responsible financially. But I hear they are responsible. Yeah. Okay. Is that Why would we consensus? be responsible? You know. Just because he's got this. I just thought oh, I'd bring it back up. Is in this case, I don't think we should be giving money for this. Yeah, okay. I don't know. He just, should, yeah. I don't think we should like, set a precedent now saying we're not going to pay you for anything you do. But in this case, I don't think so. Because he did it, and now he wants reimbursement for something he's already done. He didn't ask us for it, so uh, that's my opinion. But he didn't ask us for the money. Yeah, now he wants to the money. Now he wants the money. He's farming it, he's managing it. Right. Right. He, he just felt like it's conservation land. He was I'm scooped, and I gotta go pick up my son. Species, all right. That's all. So he made the request. Well, that's wait all. a minute. We need some signatures here. I know. Well, I've been waiting. All right. The one, the one last thing that's yes, seen was the 274 gate road CFC. Did we already do that? No. Um, the the grass that they put in he, there's a receipt in the file that says that he got, <laughs> he, got <salt -tolerant> <laughs> that says that he got he got salt tolerant vegetation like you see at the marine park. It was a it was a mixture of salt, tall, and vegetation, but it's not. So, <laughs> what, what are we supposed Hope to do? Um, sorry, let it go. All right. I mean, so it, the the point of the vegetation really was to, to prevent the runoff from the field going into the into yeah, the marsh. Yeah, just to get some roots there. The grass is so dense and has come in so nice yeah. that it, it's going to perform its function. It just may not last because it's not salt tall. It doesn't salt appear to, it doesn't appear to be salt tolerant. But he bought it. He has the receipt. But if you look at the grass, it's not the it's not the stuff that I saw on the receipt. It looks like but it's, lawn but it's performance grass. It, it, it's performing its function. I suggest yeah. you sign the certificate. Yeah. So if it dies in the future, then we'll, we'll get on them and screw it. No. give an enforcement order to replant it. Yeah. Didn't look like the salt tall and vegetation that I right. seen that we're recommending. But then again, in the spring, you know, mud, Mother Nature might take care of it. You know, and put, put, in put some frag up there. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. Put the frag up there. Right? No, that was the tight tank. What did tank do? It's here to stay. The tight tank, 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 tank issue? Remember the tight tank? Yeah. So we had a, maybe they were asking for an emergency. Da, 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 they stepped mm. up. They stepped up. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, that is lawn. That's definitely lawn. I know. Oh. It's got a receipt. Yeah. He, he bought saw tall and vegetation from someone from the well, that's company that flood I know. right out and die, huh? Yeah. That floods all it the could. time, right? There. If if you notice that, we will. Although you know, his, the the whole the whole yard behind that goes out along there where the lobster pots are and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. just regular grass, it seems. And they mow it, and it stays alive. Yeah. It does. You can mow. You can yeah. mow. Yeah. You can mow this saw tall and vegetation as well. If you go to the marine park, between the between the new walkway. In the boat storage facility, that new park is all the salt, tall, and vegetation that that I've been recommending because mm -hmm. it can get flooded and it'll survive. Yeah, it's all that's over. very sad down there. So. Well, they, I mean, they did regrade it in a hurry. They did. No, yeah, yeah, I think they did. They did. I mean, and yeah. that's kudos to them, honestly, because a lot of people I feel would have dragged it out out of spite. At the Marine Park? No, at 274. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they did it quickly and reseeded it and regraded it. and looked better than it did before. <laughs> and and they, <laughs> they put the tank in on the Board of Health. Right. And for, like, they had demand. to do that. Exactly. Demand, yeah. yes. Demand is the correct word. Okay. The other one is just seawall repair work. Oh, well, there is one thing. Um, the DPW came and asked if they could do maintenance on second and third cliff. Some of the some of the boulders they felt weren't yeah. weren't uh, put in properly, or they missed a couple of spots. So they want to go do and do maintenance, um, and they want to know if they need to file for it. Do they? They're considering it maintenance because last year, they, last year, they, last year with FEMA money, they re they basically shored up a lot of third and second cliff by resetting the riprap. There's a several spots they either missed or disheveled, and they want to go back, and they're calling it maintenance. Um, now, the, what they have to do, though, is to get a crane out there, they're going to have to do what they did before. They're going to have to clear, basically, a temporary roadway at the toe, at low tide, at the toe of the revetments with the crane to get out there and reset the boulders. I think they did a very nice job 
re recreating it as they moved out. <coughs> they brought the boulders back and put them in a, you know, a disheveled arrangement. I think they did a, a very nice job in mitigating the, the road that they put in for the crane to get out there. So they just want to know if they can do that under under their main, under maintenance. I would suggest I would suggest that um, if we get something in writing from them showing us the areas, we could consider it maintenance. But I certainly want to know where they're going to be yeah. where they're going to be doing it. But I don't know if you want a filing on it or not. You could you could say it's maintenance. I mean, yeah, I mean well, because it, it be really maintenance. is maintenance. They're yeah. just fixing things. It's probably it's, the problem is it's just it's a big project. Even the maintenance because they have oh, to clear yeah. the boulders at the toe. But I think if we get something in writing that shows us where they're going to do it, when they're going to do it. Yeah. We, and then we'll know that they're out there and we could consider them. Yeah, so when the neighbors call, we yes, can say. exactly, yeah. So we'll just get some in writing and I'll, and I'll pass it on to you. Yeah. Okay. Right, that I think that's uh, conservation restrictions. Todd and I and um, others have been working on the conservation restrictions and that the town attorney was supposed to have done many years ago. And we're almost, we're almost done. Thank you, uh, Laura Harbottle of the planning department did some GAS work. To, um, to help comply with the information requirements that have to go to the state for the conservation restrictions for three different pieces of property. Where are we at now? Do I need to type those up or is there anything else? I think it's just, I think all we need is the plot plans. We need from the, the plot assessors, plans still. From the assessor's office, I think that's it. All right, all right. Laura did the USGS, she yeah. did an overlay with the USGS. For uh, all three of them, yeah. she did it. Well, um, for two of them, we only need a, we only no, need. We need yeah, yeah, so we're all we're all, all set. Right. So, so I think it's just, I think it's just the plot plan. Then I think so I'll come by and then I think we'll that. send it up to the, back to the attorney. All right. What were the restrictions for? There were three piece, three piece, three parcels of land. Um, Appleton. It's CPC land. CPC, yeah. CPC, CPC man, Appleton. Um, they never did the what, CIs. What the <laughs> um, Cedar Street. Cedar Street, yeah. And. Uh, Come in the office, I'll show you. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good, though, that Laura got the GIS for us. That's big. That's yes. really big. Yeah, that was, that was really nice. Uh, that's huge. Yeah, isn't that awful? I can't think of what the third, the third one was. One. And, then on, and then one last thing. Mariachi. On the oh, Mariachi. 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 Yeah, yeah. Mariachi. Or is that Cedar Street? No. No, that's Wolf Jack. Yeah, Cedar Street. All right. Cedar Street. Cedar Street. Yeah, there seems to be a, uh, there seems to be an increase in the request for certificates of compliance, like today. Yeah, we had one just recently where they had hydro seeded it, but they but the grass hadn't even popped yet. But the people were going to have to rent. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not sure, but it seems to be. A, I think I think that's an internal thing where we need to deal with. But people are coming in asking for certificates of compliance before their time is up. I particularly there's a two year. There was a two-year growing season for septic systems. I really don't think we need to wait two years for septic systems. Basically, all they're doing is, is seeding you with grass, and within months the grass is growing. I think if there's evidence that the grass is up, growing, and looking healthy, we shouldn't have to wait two years, because we've got probably hundreds of you know, hundreds of certificates of compliance that are 10 and 15 years old. Because they, I think because they they're forgetting about them. I found ones think? from the 80s. And <laughs> there's, you don't even want to know what's downstairs. Well, the, the ones for grass are one thing, but I remember. The ones for plants, that's different. Yeah. Um, oh, de we definitely want a bunch yeah. of yeah. bushes and plants, and we never knew whether they'd been planted, whether they're going to grow or whatever. So the two, that's the reason for the. For the two years. Oh yeah, we, we 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 won't change that. In fact, what we're beginning to do is a tracking system. That um, Carol ha Carol has a database that goes back many years. But we've added we've added a, a little little a little um, notation at the end, like wetland mitigation P for plants and things like that. So we can so we'll know where we're requiring okay. buffer okay. planting, yeah. wetland mitigation. We we don't have that. So it'd be nice to have that somewhere where if we wanted to go check it, if we had an, an intern who wanted to go check on the status of wetland replications, we should be able to go in. But, you know, so we're just beginning that tracking system. Hmm. Um, then the last thing is the website. We noticed, we noticed that we went on the website, the website was changed. Yes, because Frank told me to. Oh, we didn't And I called that. Tom Rose. Oh, we didn't know that. Yeah, well, he, he told me to. Okay, well, we're suggesting that if, if the website is going to be changed, it should probably go through the office just so we know. Because we went on the website and it was different. It's, it was appropriate to do. There's no yeah, question well, about Frank it. said it's just, to it's me. It's just that we, we looked well, at it and we said, well, nice. <laughs> who, who um, authorized There it? was a reason, because it should, should have, Frank. Yeah, we, we yeah. talked about it. We had said at the last meeting to change it, and it didn't get changed. 
And Frank said to me, you know, we were talking. I said, no. And he said, well, change it. And I said, all right, I'll. Okay. E email to him. I'm just, I'm just, you can, you're the commission. Yeah. You can all change it if you want, but I'm just suggesting. No, no, no. I should have known. He told me to. <laughs> oh, no. he, he told me to change it into cop, copy Trish. Yeah, he but we weren't, copy Trish. we weren't, no, we, we in so the we office did. didn't know about it. We yeah. just felt a little like there should be some procedure. Oh. Well, make a change. No, it was appropriate to do. It was appropriate to do. But that's fine. Yeah. I, I was just doing what he told me to do like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But well, we haven't sent out the thank you letters yet. Well, we just write, write a thank you note. Tony, know. write yeah, it. Well, you've got to find the time yeah. to do that between the, between the you enforcement. Want me to write a letter? Between the Tony enforcement. Tony yeah. will do it. That would be great. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Do it tomorrow, Tony. And that would be very helpful. I'm just trying to do it right now. I'm just trying to. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I'm trying to fit it in. Thanks. Between enforcement orders. Your help. <laughs> okay. What's the seven acres? Good. Oh, nice. Come after after, after 15 done. years. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know. Um. I'm going to finish this. All right. I think, I think that's Move on. it. I don't know. I'll give you something. There's just one more. The, the, the CPC C application? I don't yeah, know. What's that? I don't know who put that on. Something there. came in, and I mentioned it to Frank. It's a seven acres. Yeah. It, it's prime acreage. Tell, tell him to file. With CPC, put it in. The, the homeowner. I think he's in Virginia or something. I thought maybe we could talk you into it. No, absolutely not. This says there should be a vote for a sprinkler system at 104 Edward oh, Foster right. Road. That's important. Remember, we talked about it last time. In, in, um, Cause they, the audit the the condition says no sprinkler system. They put a sprinkler the system in. They really want to know it. if they can keep the sprinkler system but that's there. A prime piece now it's of property. Run, this is an unusual sprinkler it system. I think the reason why the condition was put in was because of yeah. drought conditions several years back. And sprinkler systems were watering the sidewalks, as we've all seen. The sprinkler system happens to be on a, on a satellite image, so on a, uh, connected to a satellite somehow, so that if it's going to rain, it doesn't turn on. Da, 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 da. Uh, they want to know if they can keep the sprinkler system. Do they it, comply with the one week, the signs all around I town say it. you only are allowed to water once a week with the sprinkler system? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that should be brought to their attention that they're only allowed to use it once a week. Who cares if it's going to rain or not? You're only once a week. You know what? All, all irrigation systems have a thing. Mine doesn't go on if it's raining out. Mm -hmm. All right. No. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a I'm, I mean, I don't care what, what he has. It's, it's, it's just a little different technology, but I've had mine for years, and it doesn't, you know, it knows when it's raining, and it doesn't go on. So should we make well, him take well, it well, out? Well, the town. Why won't well, we make him take it out? Well, because huh? it's not well, in the, the he wasn't supposed to put it in. Yeah. It wasn't in the orders. He I, I don't think we can make him take it out. I just don't Why think not? Uh, Why not? Oh, we could. I don't think we should. Why? Well, we but could, I mean, but see, that, that's that half the problem. People do what they well, want. Yeah, that's that's true. True. They can do something else rather than No, the because there's more to the story. There's more to the story that might help. Yeah. They, they, they're going to see if it's feasible for them to drill a well on the property. If they can drill a well, they can they'll be using their own water. If the well's not feasible, they'll be willing to take it out in two years, the sprinkler yeah. system, in two years after the new vegetation, because it's a new build. So after the vegetation is in, they're willing to take it out after two years, unless they get a well. If they get a well, it's their own water. They'd like to keep yeah, it. Yeah, but why do schmucks matter. like me have to go go around? We the get our drinking time. water from the wells in the well, town, no, and they're it's just going to be taken from the same it's aquifer. Is it going to be a different aquifer? Like whenever they use their water, I don't know. That's that, its that is aquifer. not it's very possible. But it's very but they possible. Would not, aquifer. It's on the barrier beach. It may be its own irrigation system. Maybe it's on, it's on they the barrier it. beach, and they think they're going to get a well of fresh water. Edward Foster Road. Yeah, I know. They probably do. They probably will. Well, have. You know what? They probably, really? they probably will have it, water floating amazing. on top of on top of the. It's a possibility that yeah. they'll have water. Wow. The previous owner to where I live had a well. I'm a hundred feet from the beach. Yeah, he's. I, I'm on. Wow, town water. It must, water. Be, it must be a brackish, a little salty. I don't know. It's, we don't. Yeah, it's yeah it depends on salt. depends on the depth of the, how much water is actually there. So I so we could say yes. In two years, take it out. If you don't get your well, if you get your well, let it go. That's the request. Either, I mean, either you allow people, people on doing. the dunes to have uh, uh, an irrigation system, or you don't. And, and, and historically, we have never allowed them. To, 
I can't remember in my five years on the commission that we have ever allowed anybody to have. No. Have it. And these these people want, uh, you know, the palace on on the beach, and historically we have said this ain't a palace beach town. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my I think the important issue for me is link it to a, link it to a performance standards for a dune. Can we? Is there a performance standard in a dune that prohibits you from water? I mean, I don't know. I don't know that where there's a performance standard of a dune that would prohibit you putting a sprinkler system in. Well, I, I guess Under the I, wetlands, right? I thought that the issue would, was that uh, you were you were tearing up the the uh, the ground and making it more susceptible to to wash in a in a storm situation. Um, that's a little bit where I would come from on, on that, but um, um, I just don't see why. I mean, if we want to if we want to change our standards, then you know, because because there are other ways of complying with performance standards. I would say that's one thing, but uh, I think it was what I, I I was told it was a water conservation issue from years ago to to basically not have people wasting water when we we're in a situation where we're trying to conserve it. That's, that's yeah. why I, I was told that's where the, that condition originated from. Yeah. And it's so probably very valid. It's probably very valid in a lot of areas around town. Yeah, it might be, but that's, that shouldn't have been our call in the first place, I don't think. Like, we don't control the water. We have a water department that puts some of these regulations. Right. We didn't make those regulations. Right. We shouldn't be enforcing them. Yeah. So actually, we're, we're supposed to protect water quality. Period. Right. That's part of one Period. of our performance no, things. But, yeah, within but those we, we do. Systems close to the ocean as far as that goes, yes. But if we're going to make these people take it out, then like this deck that we just decided we were going to keep in Hummer Rock, mm -hmm. like we're, just, we're so inconsistent sometimes. It drives me nuts. It's like, all right, well, this guy built it really well. He put the sprinkler system in really well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like where are we going to leave the guy, let the guy take his text, it looks nice, well there's a huge hey, house, that's great, but. I told Jim this afternoon, take the walkway out. I'm, I'm, for, I'm just saying. I like am for, and, yeah, you know, but the majority out. rules here. Right. The majority rules. Absolutely. And as far, as far as I'm concerned, if you were told not to do it, and you do it, it should come out. Right. But I don't, and I don't rule they the could, rules. They could, they, they could conceivably appeal it if they wanted. And, and, and possibly when we still have the condition of no fertilizer, no no fertilizer, yeah. no pesticides. That condition is still in there. That, know, well, that protects the green water quality, ground water quality. Doing what they so that's a condition exactly. that that's, that's a condition saying, that's important. So, so this is right across, across that from the like, oh no, it's sturdy. So we yeah, the new house that just went in right, right before you get to it. Didn't hear me say it was sturdy because I told him this afternoon. Whatever. I don't think it's worth. I'm not going to argue. Just, so I, I think, think they would sue us if we told them to take it out. Mm -hmm. I think that's a distinct possibility. Mm -hmm. So maybe I I'll think maybe if we went on the softer side and said take it out in two years, no matter what, <laughs> I don't think whether you get the well or not, get the well willing, established yeah. and take it out in two years. They're willing to do. They're willing to do that if they get the well. Correct. So do it anyway. Huh. Well, I guess we should have a vote. It says we should have a vote. I, I don't know. I have to send. I have to send them a response. I'm not sure you have to vote. I just need direct. I have to send them a response because I have it in writing. Can we keep the sprinkler system for two years if we get a well? If we don't get the well, I the don't only know. thing is, I will give them credit that they fessed up. Yeah. I don't ask me why they even no. bothered. I don't think. To it's, I don't. I don't think it's up, in our purview. You know? I don't think it's. Un no, I don't think it's under our jurisdiction. Yeah. They probably want the certificate of compliance. I think. <laughs> The no we probably wouldn't even see it if it wasn't sure running when I went out there. We <laughs> wouldn't. Say that again? I think no fertilizer and no herbicides, and then make sure they know that it's once a week, just like from us. The yeah. town has restrictions in place. We're in conservation. Yeah. The restrictions are there to help us conserve water. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the restriction's over now. Oh, it is. This yeah. is it it's goes from yeah. Yeah. Memorial Labor Day to Labor Day. 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 Yeah. All right. So it's, it's a but I think that's going to be an annual thing. I thought they voted one of the few that they well, yeah, like permanently. They, yeah, I think they need to decide that every year, but it, it could be. Yeah. Do they have to re-vote every year? They need to, 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 to. I don't know. That's the water department's issue. Sure. That's the water department's issue. Yeah, well, yeah. Wow. All right. All right. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, I kind of got it. Um, I just want to let's see. Frag <laughs> Frag Mighty's removal. I have a request from somebody. He wants to know whether he should bother filing with us. It's on um, Alden Road, 20, 
34, 34 Alden Road. <laughs> Several years ago, they were allowed to remove maybe a, a swath of four to six feet of Phragmites beside a yard. They planted some really nice vegetation, you know, uh, uh, coastal vegetation. Phragmites is now taking it over. It's like the sprinkler system. They're coming and asking us, can we now eradicate, uh, uh, cut the back Phragmites and replant that area with with um, coastal type vegetation. Now, but now, Phragmite, Phragmite is, a, is listed in the Wetlands Act as a wetland plant, yeah. but, it, but it grows in the upland as well. So how the, how the wetland scientists are, are doing wetland delineations with Phragmites is they're doing soil. So if you've got Phragmite and you've got a hydric soil, excuse me, if you've got um, a, a soil that's, that's, I can't say hydric, because it, it, it grows in Marine, so brackish waters as well, then it would be considered a wetland plant. If, you know, if it's upland soil, then it's an upland plant and not. So it's kind of, but you know what it's doing to the vegetation, it's basically overtaking everything. So my suggestion would be to let them come in with the proposal. I think it's just a four, foot, four or five foot swath and they're gonna replant it with coastal vegetation. I would suggest we say, come on and plant it. He doesn't wanna come in with the proposal to, and just have you guys say no. So he wants to know is it worth it. I think it is. Oh, definitely. As long as he's replanted. Yeah. It isn't as though he's just wiping stuff out yeah. and going to plant, you know, more grass or something. No, Where no. is it? Would. Alden, Alden Road, uh, 34, yeah. 34 Alden Road. Or uh, 24, excuse me, 24. It's down by you. Yeah. I would. I'll, show you, I'll show you where it is if you want to take a look at it. I went down and looked at it. Jim, could you answer them by, by saying, um, we would like to see a, a, a scientific approach to, uh, to eliminating the frag um, and it, it come up with something new and different and, and <laughs> give you the idea of just cutting it down is ridiculous. I mean, it'll come back next yeah. year. And they, want to they, want to, they want to dig it out. As they, they want to. They want to dig it up. They want to dig it out. They want to dig it out. They want to get every little piece. Of, they d they ask them to come in with some science, with some something based on a, on on some new science. Tell them that this is a major problem. We're looking for a solution. Come up with a real scientific solution to this problem. The, the the scientists aren't coming up with a solution to it. I know. Except, except, except Roundup. Except Roundup. Agent Orange. <laughs> Agent you answered, Orange. You've answered their letter. <laughs> the vinegar worked at Appleton Farm. I mean, yeah, put the vinegar on Dude. See if the vinegar works. We still haven't found vinegar. out. We haven't tried vinegar with Fred yet. Oh, no, but we still haven't It works on all the other invasives. Yeah. At least, I mean, you know, this is ridiculous. Yeah, tell them if they're willing to try out the vinegar, then we're all in. Because we need to know. I mean, I know, we need to know whether I don't even think really we need works. to get rid of the frag. It's a wetland plant. You just said so. Well, it, it is. If, in well, it is. Well, it is. If it's in the correct soils, if it's in upland soil, it's not. <laughs> and there, and this you is, know what's are hard the is we, we did have somebody a couple of years, and, and it was before you came. Remember the guy? I think it was down Minard or someplace. And on the weekend, he brought a backhoe or a bobcat or something in and they, they just mowed the whole area <laughs> down. Remember that? Mm -hmm. it, it was to, to, Totman. Right, that's right. We're yeah, still, it was our on. first incident with to, Totman that they on figured TV. on the weekends they'd get away with it. But a neighbor called us. <laughs> and so we said, oh, did it work? Did it come back? I don't know. I don't know. It, it came no, back. Where's Alden? It's right by Egypt, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yes. it's right yeah. down there. That's, I think that's where it was when he was involved in that, wasn't it? Because I, I saw it. I'm oh, then sure. it wasn't that, that, that long ago. Right? See, time, I, I have no concept. Oh, were, were you the one that saw it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was in the oh, squash kit. Yeah, near the old fire station in mine. Yeah. They cut down a huge area yeah. across the street from the house. Whatever, but it comes back unless you stay on top of it. You got to keep cutting, cutting, cutting. Penny, Penny, you need to know about this because oh. you, you keep bringing up the marine park. Oh yes. Um, there's a swale as you enter the marine park. Yes. It's it's the water's ponding there, and I haven't got your answer about whether they've created it, but there's water ponding. There's a there's a swale that was designed as in, as in, with the initial redesign of the of the marine park. Yeah. There's a swale along there. 
I wrote, I wrote it up, ran it by everybody who's involved in this. We sent it out to 500 people, <coughs> repetitive lost properties in the floodplain. Well, the repetitive lost properties are uh, properties that have filed more than two claims over $1,000 over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we had to send out notices to them. We had to send out notices to everybody in the floodplain last year. That's 5,000 people. We had to send out notices. So this is an expense on the town. Yeah, who pays for it? Can I haven't gotten one. The postage. We do. Yeah, who pays for it? We pay we for the postage, one. and no. yeah, we don't and get it. And he lives there. He lives on the beach. Sorry. I don't know. You should have. You should have gotten Seriously? One. Yeah. No, I didn't. Are you a repetitive lost property? No. Oh, because that was just said, that was just sent out a couple of weeks ago. But several months ago, we sent out a fly to everybody in the flood plain. Really? Yeah. Your wife is hiding inside of you. I, I don't remember <laughs> the 10% drop either. Yeah. <laughs> so. Except for Hummer Rock, they don't count. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we have to get all the po see what we get. What we get is a, we, we get is just a list of the addresses. They can't give us the names, so we get a list of the addresses. Now, half the people in Hummer Rock don't live here year round. They, have, you know, uh, so I do. Carol had to spend a quite a quite a bit of time with the assessors trying to find out where they lived in Virginia or New Jersey and oh, everywhere yeah. else, oh, trying to just to send these out. So it's, yeah. it's, I'm just I'm just giving you a sense. It's, it's a lot of work, and it I is. Know residents, I know the residents of the floodplain are, are listening. Why are we responsible for that when we only have a part-time agent? I know. Give me a break. Uh, because that because that was one of the responsibilities that I was told I would take on if I took the position. <laughs> if I took the position, because I think I'm, if we say how I'm we a flood, really I'm, feel, we're going to get a lot of. I have experience in floodplain <laughs> management. <laughs> yeah. That's why. All right. <laughs> yeah, Can I do so. the minutes now? I we're done. I, are you I done? Think we're done? I I make a motion to accept the minutes of July 30th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to accept the minutes of August 13th. Second. All in favor? Aye. I make a motion to accept the minutes of August 27th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Made up for the last two meetings. Yeah. The Frank here, I wouldn't have gotten through the agent's report. <laughs>